Hello, everybody. It's Friday night and it's weekender time once more. And on this week's show, we'll be taking a gentle saunter through the latest tabletop gaming and hobby news from across the industry. We'll also be checking out a couple of Kickstarters that have caught our eye. On top of that, summer is here. Our spring clean challenge is over and we'll be checking out the winners and maybe a few honourable mentions as well from across the categories later on in the show. It's a jam-packed one, but we've also got a big prize to give away from store.ontabletop.com. One lucky subscriber will be in with a chance to pick up the Space Marine Interdiction Battle Force. It's a heck of a mouthful. Uh, so if you want to be in with a chance to win, you need to pop a comment below and be a subscriber to the YouTube channel. If you can share us around and give us a thumbs up, all of that sort of good stuff, that really helps out as well. Otherwise, sit back and relax because your weekend starts here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Weekender. This week, I'm joined by Ben and Free. You've got the uh, the lean team. <laughs> cut, away the, cut away the fat. The gristle's I'm, gone. It's just us. I'm sitting in with a nice pint of Ben and Jerry's this Friday. Oh, yes, oh. Yeah. We've, we've not heard that in a while. I know. Not to bring it back. very true, actually. Yeah. It <laughs> back. No, that, that'll be it. It'll be plastered all over the comments now. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we have some interesting things going on. First up, the back end of the show today uh, will mostly be about, well, it'll be entirely a bit about the Spring Clean Challenge. Uh, we've been through the project system. I've basked in all of your goodness and uh, managed to whittle it down to, well, I've managed to whittle it down to the winners. I've also included a few of the uh, honourable mentions. I could have included so many more, but we'll get to that <laughs> later on. Uh, so you've that to look forward to towards the end of the show. Uh, but before we kick into the show, uh, we're going to be talking about a big announcement from Corvus Belli about mm, Infinity. Yes. Uh, yeah. So the Infinity Worldwide campaign has been announced. It will be running from the 11th of July to the 25th of July, and they'll be running it in conjunction with ourselves and using the War Console once again. This time round, it's called the Durgama Takeover. Uh, so if people have been paying attention, and if you haven't, why haven't you? Uh, Rave and I, the most recent book, uh, came out ooh, top of the year. Yeah. And this follows on immediately from the events after that. Uh, so the campaign itself will be running across those two weeks. And it will be running both on the Durgama Peninsula, which is on Concilium Prima, the planet below Raveneye, and you'll be able to fight out across uh, these various areas. I believe the uh, combined army are coming in from the southern tip of the peninsula and working their way inland. Uh, but apart from that, it will also be taking place on board Raveneye Station oh. itself, and whoever controls the station will control sort of air superiority. Uh, so you've very much got a combined arms effect for the combined army which mm -hmm. is uh, interesting uh, if you don't want your forces to be shot out of the sky by giant laser beams uh, then you probably need to make best use of controlling both the raven eye station but also keeping an eye on the prize on the ground itself uh, so if you're interested in getting involved in that there'll be more details coming up both on infinity's website and over on tabletop.com as well in the coming War weeks console will be back yeah. War console will be back in a big way yeah, yeah. um i know the 
address, but I don't think it's been shared yet, so I'm not going to say. Um, <laughs> don't, go <laughs> we, we, don't, don't go there. there. <laughs> don't go there. Tom and Tim and Lloyd will throw things at my head if you attempt <laughs> yeah. to log in there and break it before you're ready. Yeah. Uh, but it should be a lot of fun. It rounds out towards the end of July, and then immediately after that, you'll start seeing some of the big announcements coming from uh, Gen Con, I think, then as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so a packed month for Infinity players. Uh, mm. And obviously, if you're not into Infinity already and you've been toying with the idea, um, probably a good way to get into it is to yeah. take part in a campaign like this because uh, you've got a, a slow model count. And even if you just want to play something like Code 1, um, yeah, pick up one of those the, packs and dive in. Yeah, yeah get, get the pack, get a couple of friends, and, and hammer into it. Um, just spray them, prime them up in a, in a color of the <laughs> army's choice, yeah. you know, and wouldn't worry about it too much then. But it's yeah. War Chrome. I'm looking forward to from Corvus Betty. Oh, yeah. It's getting it's that lately, fantasy yeah, spring yeah. coin, yeah. getting that fantasy spring coin. Well, we'll hear more about Corvus that Bennett. towards the end of the year, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but right now, uh, we're going to go straight into the news. No Indie of the Week this week. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm taking there all may, the indie time. There may be a morsel projects. There may be a morsel for you in tomorrow's show. Well, sorry, on Sunday's show. Mm. So if you want to go and check out that, maybe I'll have some fun stuff for you there. But there, there we go. So. <laughs> But, there you yeah. go. That's an incentive. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Snakey, snakey. Join, us, join us on the XLBS with the rest of the cogs yeah. and see what uh, Benjamino is talking about. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, let's just kick straight into the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh- you love. It's the Muck news <laughs> uh, so we're starting things off this week with the folks from firelock games um a little while ago i think it was like last year was it we did a let's play where we went through uh war stories um in its sort of early stages of development which is a world war ii role-playing game by the folks at uh at firelock yep. uh, by gabriel garcia um we sat down and played the game it was really good fun uh for those people that are not uh in the know about it you'll be playing as paratroopers tank crews regular old Joes, resistance fighters, um, war correspondents and all that kind of thing, fighting out uh, sort of battles and discovering scenarios and all that kind of thing set during Operation Overlord um, in World War II. Um, It uses the Year Zero engine. So if you're familiar with Tales from the Loop uh, or Mutant Year Zero and all that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff, you'll be very familiar with the system. It uses a pool of dice looking for D6s, but obviously there's lots of things that have been tweaked and added in here to make it much more lethal, um, as we found out when we played the game. (laughs) I was Uh, done up like a kepper by Justin. I think you were, yes. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> uh, we actually, because obviously we have the the actual play, or the let's play. You can go and check out for yeah. that, and we also have an interview talking a little bit more in depth about designing the game and all that mm. kind of thing. If you want to dive in and give it a go, the core rulebook is available to pre-order right now. Uh, going to be available later on in the year physically, although it's also going to be available digitally sooner than that, which is mm-hmm. kind of awesome. Uh, they're also doing this rendezvous, rendezvous with Destiny campaign book that you see there, which will come with oodles and oodles of historical information, maps, nice. background, campaigns, missions, everything you could think of for playing out Operation Overlord mm-hmm. as said characters during World War II, which I think is really great. Um, as as is the case with all the things that Firelock Games do, they always try and hit it's the cool. historical accuracy thing. Mm. Um, so, like, this is very, very sort of on brand for that. Um, so much so that when we were playing the Let's Play, the, the whoever who, who, the guy who was uh, leading us through it all was like, "Ah, so we, should we change that to make it more realistic and all that mm. kind of thing?" Which was kind of awesome. So, uh, it's very cool. Um, in addition to the books. Uh, and you've also got a GM screen as well that you can pick up. They're also doing the dice and the weapons pack as well. So the weapons pack would be great for you to quickly reference in the middle of combat and all that kind of thing as well. And then the dice, they're standard D6s and a D, standard D10 for the most part, but they have special symbols on them to indicate your special successes and failures and all that kind yeah. of thing as well, which is kind of cool. So you can use them as normal D6 in your games of bolt action. <laughs> uh, but you could also then just use them, uh, uh, you know, in in the game of um, war stories to give you a little bit more immersion, and so that's easily recognisable when you're rolling dice and trying to get successes and all that kind of thing as well. So. The the great thing about this for me, um, both when we were playing and when I was talking to Gabe about the concepts behind it, was unlike a, a standard RPG where you have your character 
and everybody around the table has a character and that's it in this you have the whole platoon um they may not all feature they may be background or supporting characters a la band of brothers but it means because it is as historically accurate as they can make it so if you break a leg you're not back next week because you've slept twice and therefore healed your maximum hit points <laughs> you're out for 68 you weeks done. while that yeah. busted leg is fixed so that character is sent off to get medicked up and then somebody else lucky or something yeah really. somebody else <laughs> yeah. from the background characters of the, yeah. the the platoon comes forward and you play them or maybe you've got a sniper team in that platoon they're not going to be in every single adventure every single app if you think of it like the tv series band of brothers every episode you won't get them all the time but occasionally they may be called on at which point then maybe you swap out your character and another one of the group's character for that sniper team and they go off and do that little mission so you you get the idea that you're not playing four people in the middle of the war you're playing this whole group the whole platoon or squad or whatever it happens to be um and people are 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 coming to the fore uh, and their characters grow as the as the campaign goes on so you may just have names for them originally um but then later on you'll maybe have to use buck and buck comes forward and it turns out he's from missouri and you know he's a a poacher or whatever you know and and his character develops and his stats then get fleshed out and, and you end up by the end of the campaign with this whole slew of characters rather than just the three or four that you happen to have been playing with throughout so i really like that idea of of how they've put together the uh the yeah. combat for it and the, 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 the nice thing, the nice thing about it as well because it's the year zero engine mm-hmm. character creation is really quick and easy yeah. so like there's there's not like when you make a dnd character think about making sort of a billion mages or something you think of all the spells you'd have to remember and all that kind of stuff in order to do that with this it's a lot more obviously it's a little bit more realistic <laughs> in that sense you've only got to you know work out some background and all that kind of thing so it's a lot more narratively focused which i think yeah. is really nice and, you know, you could easily just make this platoon very, very quickly. Oh, yeah. Fun, so. And I'll throw this little rinky-dink tip out there for both players and games masters alike. The hardest part of running a game is normally coming up with a name. Oh. Because you just end up with stealing a character's name or somebody from real life. So all of a sudden you've got five Winston Churchills or whatever, and it's a big <laughs> it's very, it's very, It's very common. It's very difficult not to have Tom Hardy and Tom Hiddleston <laughs> in your party. <laughs> Go online, Google census results for yeah. a year yeah. as close to whatever you're playing. So census results, America, 1930. And then you'll just get like a massive sheet of names of people who existed and you just go down through them. And it's very good for NPCs as that's well. That's a for great GMs. idea. Just, that's yeah. my little tip to you. That's a great the other, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm just endlessly talking about it now, but the other thing that I think is really nice about this game as well is because it's set in the real world, mm-hmm. it encourages the use of maps, photography, yeah. all that kind of thing. So all this stuff is readily available. You're not having to draw maps and all that kind oh. of thing. You can just use... You know, not satellite imagery, but you know what I mean. Plain yeah. photos and all that kind of thing yeah, that were yeah. taken at the time in order to map out where locations are and all that kind of thing. So it's, I know yeah. I haven't seen the the final version yet, but I know when Gabe was putting it together, all of yeah. the maps he was using were the actual U.S. military maps mm-hmm. oh, wow. that they used in World War Two because yeah. they're all available online. I think as a resource via the the U.S. military's website, so you can Google Very it. Cool. But it's it's yeah. great just seeing those sort of topographical uh-huh. maps um, because it really puts you in the uh, in the setting yeah. there we go sticking with rpgs sticking with RPGs. historical frame. we are so the fallout rpg has been out just over a year now uh we've got special edition boxes digital dice digital dice digital demos dice a huge rule book and it's still quite new in all fairness i don't mm-hmm. think that it's 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 fresh but if you do have that 438 page chunky rule book you might have been a bit overwhelmed in how to get started. You don't know where to begin, i.e. no rollbook. But now, Modifius is welcoming you to the wasteland. So they've got a two players into getting started in nuclear wreckage, beyond belief, across the Commonwealth and around Boston with a new Fallout RPG two-player starter set. So, starting the adventure, you'll be diving into the irradiate ruins of downtown Boston. So, it's quite aptly named Welcome to the Wasteland. And it will come bound in a 60-page booklet and you'll be going out as survivors, goals, su- uh, super mutants, robots, and you'll get to explore and wander rotting streets. 
bravely. So it's set to design for two players to get into the box. So okay. next cool. to the quest book clear, you've got an abbreviated and short version of the rules. Um, you've got a basic introduction to the world uh, in 56 pages. And you've got a full scope of the dice that you need, which are Fallout themed. They're D20s um, and a couple of D6s as well. And you've got 56 of your Nuka Cola tokens that you need, as well as some pre generated <laughs> characters, just in case you want to chuck yourself in oh, without cool. creating something. Yeah. I really like these starter sets that publishers are making. And I've bought over quite a few over the last years, actually. I've bought the Animal Adventures one, I've bought the One Brick one, I've bought the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart kit, was quite good as well. And I'm not yet to try one from a Diffies yet. I know that they had the Star Trek Adventures one with the same kind of stuff inside as mm. well, but they're quite a low cost entry point considering for what you get in them. And it's great if a, if both of you are pitching in as well. And it's really good and they're really great introductions to a world without being too overwhelmed and yeah, raising the whole really wall book yeah. and just taking too much in. So mm. it's really, really interesting. But I've been tempted by Fallout before I played a lot of Fallout in all fairness uh, but pre Modifius uh, not pre Modifius pre Bethesda but there's the, the fact that there's a 68 page quick start guide if you're not sure about committing over on their website as well so if you do go on their store there's a free download for you to just get to have a look at the quick start guide which has got all you need really and all you need is just some pencils some paper some things to switch out your tokens for um, if you do want to have a look before you do purchase two players, that's it, or a big chunky rule book. So it's if you are feeling a pull of some post-apocalyptic, um, you can head over and get in a quick start guide, a two player starter set, a rule book. There's many different options to get involved into for that RPG. Um, so this going on to pre-order for a release in August. It's fascinating that they've decided to make it a um, two player Mm-hmm. Starter set as well, rather than yeah. when going for a, a full party. Just to start for the set, lone yeah. survivor in the uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it kind of lends itself to that, I suppose, because yeah. what little I know about the game is it's generally just one person walking around getting attacked by you know, <laughs> about mutated things across yeah. the wasteland. Yeah. What's obviously quite nice about that too is that because because obviously Medipius do the wasteland warfare game as well. If you want yes, to, you as Jerry would say, play role-playing games incorrectly, incorrectly. you could introduce uh, miniatures into the mix as well and do some stuff like that, which is quite nice. Maybe Before. play out sort of role-playing scenarios, and then if you wanted to do something a little bit bigger and a little bit more hefty, introduce loads of miniatures in and play the actual skirmish game at the same time. So it's a the really nice like, uh, terrain is gorgeous as well. Yeah, there's a really the nice fallout terrain is gorgeous. So there's loads again if you want to play role Very cool. <laughs> on the tabletop. So yeah, quite interesting for Fallout RPG. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if, I mean, you say there are pre-gen characters in there, but I wonder how difficult it would be to run the starter set for a full group. I can't imagine it would be you that. You probably could do it. You would say so. Without um, If they've got enough characters in there, just it's an adventure, so. Yeah, so. I'm just currently seeing if I can find the... Oh, I found it. Here we go. Because <laughs> I'm by nature curious. I'm a nosy person. Absolutely. We know this. Need answers, Jerry. Yeah, I always need answers. Uh, so I found the getting... Ah, oh, that's the oh, Western Warfare one. Yeah. Oh, is that, yeah. that's not the RPG. That's their... No. That's one, the ah, yeah. annoying. In that case, <laughs> I haven't found it. I tell you what, it's a pain, it's a pain to find. If you go on to the game, so go on to your role playing role playing game, down. scroll down and it's in there. I, I went on to oh, role playing okay. games, filtered it down to Fallout RPG and then had all of their products. So there's Fallout. It's not ah. it's not in sci fi. <laughs> it's not on sci fi. But I'll go if you go on RPGs, that's where I found it. Just across RPGs and filtered it down to Two D twenty RPGs, maybe? Yeah. Oh, like looking in the there you go, Fallout RPG. There you go. Ah. And if you go to their store with their all products of their... Um... Oh, so there's a few different ways for you to sort of have a look at it. There's so loads of ways to get involved if you do want to grow in. But I do really appreciate that not only is the free kick, uh, kickstart guide there, that you can um, have the two-plus starter set without getting out of the big champion walks. I'll It'll add a link. I'll, 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 I'll grab you a link. There <laughs> you go. I'll free downloads. I will find it. Oh, you got it. Have you got it? It yeah. was in their store. Uh, there it was. I would assume it's in the free oh, downloads right. bit as well. Because otherwise, right I'd, otherwise I'd cry. <laughs> well, there's human robot 
and pre-gen characters anyway. Oh, there you go. So, so if you've got those, yeah. you should be able to expand the other one. Because as, cool. as nice as as nice as having the little compact Bijou little um, one, I was going to say one v one. Technically, technically it's not versus. Although if if you're my type of GM, then yes, it is versus your players. Uh, but it would be nice that you you can get the starter set and expand it in some way. That would be wonderful. So if you've got the rules and you can get a couple of extra character sheets, you should be able to go nuts. Well, that's, this is what I'm saying content. about price entry. If you're splitting that between two, that's even cheaper. If you're splitting it between a group, it's a great way to get involved in fairness. See if you like it, give it a go. Don't like it, don't buy a rule book. Where are we off to next, Ben? Yeah. Uh, RPGs behind, are we? Yes, yeah, so we're leaving RPGs behind, and we're heading to uh, a strange and twisted world <laughs> with Idols of Torment, uh, which is the game that we have talked about in the past from Black Magic Crafts. Um, so this is the uh, new skirmish game that's going to be coming to Kickstarter later this year. Um, I think it's around, sort of around September time they're going to be aiming to bring it out. Um, initially, the game was just going to be uh, sort of effect- effectively the rule book, mm. uh, and then you just sort of dived in with whatever miniatures you had to ha- had to hand. You can still do that. You can you know use whatever miniatures you've got lying around and use them and sort of you know customize them up and all that kind of thing and just play out the game on the tabletop Mm -hmm. however they recently announced that they are working alongside crippled god foundry who are a 3d printing Mm -hmm. master house effectively (laughs) uh to uh create a range of bespoke miniatures for you to use in the game for the various factions called the orders so they showed off two of them already, which you can see sort of highlighted there, mm-hmm. uh, which um, are sort of, they kind of tie into the traditional kind of like seven deadly sins kind of thing, but then with a little bit of a twist here yeah. and there. Yeah. Um, all of them feel like they've been taken from the cover of a metal album, which I think. Yeah, <laughs> it is very much that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so they're working on creating those, which are going to be a fun. They're going to be 3D printable, but they're also potentially working at creating um, physical miniatures for those as well, which is kind of nice. This then goes alongside the um, STL files for the Lost, which are kind of like your objectives in the game. Because mm-hmm. actually what you do in um, Eyes of Torment is you're not hunting down like treasures and all that kind of thing. You're actually hunting down human souls that you want to use in order to reap them back into your collection to you know feed your faction and all that kind of stuff, which I think is pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to be available as STLs, but also a plastic sprue, which is quite nice. This is showing off some of the other bits and pieces they're working on as well. So they're actually going to be doing uh, so uh, token sets and all that kind of thing that you can use in the game, which is kind of cool. Those little um, uh, candle markers are going to be used oh. to designate different character types and all that kind of thing. So if you have multiples of the same, you can use that to denote who's who and all that kind of stuff, which I think is really nice. Uh, and that was just a little bit of a shot of what they've been working on at the moment for uh, with Crippled God Foundry. Um, I think there's like six or so factions in the game. I think it's maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, but So obviously they've worked on two of them. There's going to be another like, so yeah, you go one, two, three, I think there's four, yeah. So you've got the two, it's the ones between, the ones on the side. So you've got Scorn, the Vein. No, no, so the the Insatiate, the Vile, the Vein. Ah, right. Those Ah, are the 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 orders in the game. Yeah, yeah. So they've done the two of them at the top, so it's the Scorn and the Vein. Uh, So you've got the Scorn who are all sort of about about sort of blood and destruction, all that kind of stuff. And then the Vein kind of like pretty themselves up and are like demons wearing like strange, uncanny, like beautiful weird masks and like stretch skin and all that kind of thing uh it's very weird their models are all kind of like weird ballet dancers and all that kind of stuff which that's is kind awesome. of cool. so, yeah pretty nice um but um yeah the game should be coming out uh by kickstarter in september um as a sort of general overview of the game itself as i say it's a skirmishy style game played on a very small board sort of like two by two very focused on the idea of creating fascinating, interesting uh, terrain and all that kind of stuff at the same time uh, as as the miniatures themselves. And uh, yeah, looks like it's going to be really good fun. And uh, they've been working on it for quite a while now. Very much a labour of love, I think. Uh, and it'll be fun to see where it goes. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, it'll be fascinating. I imagine, obviously, Black Magic has got a massive um, following anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I imagine yeah. it, it will be... Uh, well funded and followed by people but I'd be curious to see the the uptick from people outside of the the sort of the circle let's say the his sphere of influence yeah. um yeah because it has such a um, dante-esque 
yes stalking through yeah. the, the, the circles and, and then yeah. through the underworld that uh i can see a lot of people picking up for the aesthetic especially yes. with the actual miniatures being available yeah and not having to go out of your way to find them or source them because they, they are such an unusual thing i mean getting your damned souls is fairly easy there are plenty of roman civilians and and zombies and stuff like that that would do the the, the trick of the pinch um, but actually having some nice haunted shades of people past standing mm. around the board to be uh, preyed upon is yeah. just so much more fun i know that, that massive skinned ring of thing oh no, exactly. i saw that yeah. that's great yeah. i think um, the nice thing about the game is that it encourages you to be creative and delve into your bit spots and all that kind of stuff mm. as well and i think a lot of people are moving towards games that do that kind of thing where they're stepping away from playing mass battle stuff with very regimented, you know, groups of troops and all that kind of stuff, and playing around with the idea of just, you know, doing what we did back in the day, diving into a bit spot and just making some weird stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, that's very yeah. on brand for so, Black Magic Craft, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Hit <laughs> bash your yeah. way through it. So, yeah, it's well worth checking out that video uh, if you want to get yeah. a better look at things and all that kind of stuff and find out a little bit more about the game and all that kind of thing. Because the, the website's been updated since it was, uh, since we last talked about it. So, yeah. Oh. Very, Very cool. Very cool. Uh, sticking with dead things. I'm <laughs> dead. Look at that segue, Jerry. Mm. Right, so most people have got a copy of Exploding Kittens, have they? I'd be very surprised if most people don't. I've got two. Any, you know, you've got two. I've got <laughs> two. I've got the not safe for work version and I've got the regular version. Oh, no, I've, I've, I've got both twice. <laughs> There's one set still sealed. Because oh. you have to. In all oh. fairness, it is everywhere and... I didn't know. As well as that, there's a Netflix animated series with Lucy Liu and Tom Ellis. And that's not the news, by the way. So no, I'm no, just no, not no. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, just the fact that Exploding Sentence is coming to Netflix. Is just I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know I needed that in my life. But anyway, right, I digress. We're still with Exploding Kittens, though, right? Politics is always played on my table and we'll team up and we form allies to manipulate a game when I'm playing through. And that's merely to punish the one cheater that I know this in the room and the sore losers. And <laughs> I often play my own game of Exploding Kittens, hold a ton of diffuses until very bitter end, and I'll either and supply a bit of support and target attacks and providing favours when I can throughout the day to said foul player who's sitting around the table. And at some point, thanks to an unstoppable Exploding Kitten, I do end up out the game and twiddling my thumbs or mediating, really. Um, <laughs> and Exploding Kittens have now released a new way to play the game, with a chance to call some chaos from beyond the grave. See, there's that undead. <laughs> zombie right there. kittens. Yeah, oh, with yeah. zombie kittens. So you don't have to sit out anymore. There's oh, a new cool. set of cards, and there is the addition of absolute fluffery through the kitty veil. And you can support <laughs> or you can chaos until the last survivor is standing. So it's a new mechanic being added into the game. Unless it's pretty tense. I mean, I've been there. There isn't much downtime with Exploding Kitten other than yeah, yeah. the player has been out. But this has removed that completely, adding a zombie kitten card out for out of players, and they get to throw in some revenge until the game is over. Oh, so that's cool. Yeah. It can be combined with a current set of Exploding Kittens or two <laughs> of Jerry's. Um, <laughs> so you might have a not safe for work one with the great artwork on it, uh, but you might have another expansion. Imploding Kittens is brutal if anybody's mm. played that. Um, but if you do want to play this as a standalone, you can. So you can pick this up for a absolute huge game of Exploding Kittens or just a small game of Summer Kittens. So mm. it's already released over in the States at Target if you are in the vicinity. And it's late heading over to Walnut, but it does look like the set is already on Amazon if you do want to pick it up. I did find it on Amazon for 20 quid. So I just, I really love something that was fundamentally just quite a simple game. It's just grown so much. And the downtime for me, as I said, I always end up twiddling my thumbs by the end of the game, waiting for a finish. It, it, it's, it's gone for the chance for it to go yeah, on. And you yeah. can add in the mechanic. It's just play, uh, quite player, nice. player elimination is always a, a, a sticky subject. But, and yeah. you know, as you're saying, Exploded Kittens plays quite quickly anyway. But I yeah. like the fact that they've put this thing where you can kind of like get your own back almost by diving back in and blowing some people up. And all that. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, go on, Jay. I was going to say, obviously, you can play multiple players around the table. If you're playing two or three, there's not a huge amount of downtime because once the first person goes, the other person will go soon after normally yeah, but it's when, you get up, it's when you get up to the five or six people sitting around the table yeah, yeah at yeah. that point i would probably introduce this 
you yeah. know, what, once you hit sort of four people around the table and you know that there's going to be a bit That's of back cool. and forth. Um, so that eliminates that issue. But I see that if you're playing it as the standalone, they're still reckon about 15 minutes per game. Yeah. It tends to be quite frantic. Once people know the rules and the rules aren't difficult at all, um, then you can you can really hammer through the games quickly. I think my Exploding Kittens deck has got about 120, I think it's 188 cards in it, the Exploding Kittens deck, and this one's got 61 cards. I think I would realistically use this as an expansion, so mm. use it when I want to use it. I wouldn't have the mechanic in all the time, but it's really nice to add that mechanic. Um, it's a really good, uh, nice thing for Exploding Kittens. I'm quite excited. Yeah. Yeah. And I absolutely love the oatmeal artwork as well. I love the oatmeal, just, I know. It's so great. That's why they're not safe for work deck is worth it because the artwork is truly blissful you you, you've not lived until you've played bears versus babies i love bears versus babies bears versus i really really want to play mantis have you seen mantis I've seen, yeah i've seen mantis oh, yeah. mantis looks great it's about all the colors that mantis sees oh yeah the mm-hmm. oatmeal fantastic yeah. oh, how are you gonna do a segue on this one jerry i'm really interested well you know <laughs> I, I exploding I, kittens I, I, I exploding I tank shells. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you go on there, Ben. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, uh, we move from exploding kittens to uh, flames of war because that's a natural segue. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, everybody will know that Bold German <laughs> is the new book that came out quite recently and was a great opportunity to dive in and play out this huge offensive uh, by the Germans pushing through into the wind during the winter uh, in the sort of late war period. Um, Building on everything that came out with the initial book, we now got a whole bunch of additional um, infantry that you can uh, throw into the game as well. Um, So we have the new Volksgrenadier Assault Platoon, which will come with a huge amount of STG 44s. (laughs) That is a filthy amount. (laughs) Yes. um, As uh, as they've explained when they were talking about this, you know, that is a pretty fearsome uh, assault weapon and there's no wonder why the Germans had it in so many in so many, in so many numbers um, so yeah if you're looking to basically just chase the allies out of buildings under a hail of fire then that's the way to go with this one but you also get cool. some stuff in there for taking out vehicles as well so you've got the Panda Shrek anti-tank teams at the same time too which is pretty awesome mm-hmm. and also the MG42s which is always nice one of the big things about Planes of War you're going to need infantry to hold a lot of objectives so you know using these kind of things is a pretty good way to go um, in addition to the Volksgrenadier Assault Platoon, there's also the Volksgrenadier 7.5 centimeter gun platoon mm. as well. So if you want to throw some big, nasty uh, infantry guns into the game, you can do that as well. These were pretty maneuverable and all that kind of thing as well. So they're very handy for moving around to just the right spot to take out allied emplacements and in advancing infantry, which is kind of awesome. Everybody loves a nice pack 40. They're all exactly. always on the tabletop. Yeah. Uh, and then to cap things off for the infantry side of things, we also have the Falschenjäger uh, Assault Rifle Platoon as well. So once again, the return of the STG 44s. <laughs> if you want to be rushing in and kicking ass and taking names, a pretty hefty platoon for you to throw on the table, very much in that sort of spirit of just rushing forward and sort of overwhelming your foes on the tabletop, which I think is kind of cool. So you've got those two different types of uh, of infantry units to play around with. You've got the Vox mm-hmm. Grenadier, or you can go certainly more specialised with the, the Falschim Jäger as well if you want to, which is kind of awesome there. Um, capping things off. Oh, sorry, Jerry, were you going to say something? There? No, no, no. You, okay. You, <laughs> so, yeah. you, you were circling. I was I'm, like, oh, is you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking filth. No, it, it is <laughs> filth. Just it my is head filth. Over. Oh, no. <laughs> well, if you want some additional filth, you can Pretty throw cool. in the ME two six two fighter bomber flight as well. Mm. Um, so these were the early jets that were used by the Germans, uh, and as you might imagine, in an age of propeller based planes, the jet is fast. <laughs> so if you want to be taking out a lot of um, targets on the ground, zoom these across the board, hammer the uh, armored column that's running up the road, and then get out of there before the uh, allies have even got a chance to start turning their guns on you, which is pretty awesome. Um, you know, a little bit of an interesting segue between sort of like the late war period of World War II into sort of moving into the jet age and all that kind of stuff later on down the line. Um, but yeah, some very cool stuff there for you to play around with if you like your Germans and you want to basically just hammer the allies off the table. So there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, with the, that output. The Sturmvogel was, uh, it was a thing of beauty. Mm. Um, weirdly, they started building it. You said it was late war. They started building it in forty one. Oh, it okay. just right. took them that long to get it three right years to yeah. stop it exploding. <laughs> and, and the best way, um, 
I used to play a game called uh, Sturmovik, right? Which was a, an aircraft PC game years ago, and it was interesting at the time because they built the planes like they would build the planes, so they had an internal structure. And, and this is early 2000s, so probably very common today, very rare back then. So if you fired a shot and it would go through superstructure, it would go through the superstructure. But if you fired a shot that went through a gap between two bars, it would just puncture a hole through whatever happened to be tarp or, or uh, sheet metal. So it wouldn't yeah. do any damage. And we there were things like the uh, Sturmvogel and the um, Gotha in there as well, which were both jet engines. And we tried to play them and trying to keep the revs up so that you didn't stall. But at the same time, you didn't explode the jet engine. You had to find oh, a sweet wow. spot in between. Oh. It was so tricky. Yeah. And at the same time, you would come zipping past the screen. And we ended up playing a biplane against one of these. And you had to line up from like, seven kilometers away and come <laughs> zoom again and get one shot before you disappeared over the horizon in the other direction um so it was very peculiar and i imagine for a lot of the other um fighters in world war ii it was something very similar yeah where yeah, these jets yeah. came out of nowhere uh obviously some of the slower jets that could keep up with them because uh the v1 v2 rockets mm -hmm. had very similar propulsion and you could keep up with them and things like uh spitfires but yeah, interesting, interesting piece of kit. Yeah, it, tabletop for, it definitely uh, throws some interesting things in there for that bulge period and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's why I and, always bring anti-aircraft, even if exactly. my opponent doesn't yeah. doesn't say he's got <laughs> Just an in aircraft. Case. Just in case, yeah. <laughs> always have it. Yeah. And also keep an eye out for more stuff in the very near future. We can't talk too many specific well actually we can't talk any specifics about what's coming up we can't but, talk about any specifics but quite a lot of companies have got stuff yeah. up for pre-order so, yeah. so if you're Just, interested uh, yeah. google flames of war pre-orders yeah. you'll find them yeah you'll find them everywhere yeah. <laughs> anywho that aside um sticking with the german theme nice yeah that's a good one yeah. i like it <laughs> Um, if you've been looking for a fun and engaging board game to play with kiddies or just something quite quick and dexterous, the Spiel Distra Ares winner has been announced. And I apologise to any German viewers for how I've just booked that. It. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, 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 the Kinderspiel des Jahres. The Kinderspiel des Jahres. That one. That one. <laughs> and I apologise for any German word I say up until this point. So <laughs> any uh, any spiel winner comes with a great recommendation. So these categories are your gaming the year equivalent. And there's three. The first has been announced. And this is the best child friendly game. So Magic Mountain, or in its native language, Zauberberg. Um, again. Zalberberg. Zalberberg. <laughs> I don't think I sound firm enough, but anyway, uh, this was awarded the champion of the Kinderspiel category. So this is encouraging either one scheming mystic or up to six people to trundle down a reckless mountain path oh, um, cool. and make their way to the bottom to reach their final destination. So it's an uneven pathway, as you can see, and they're going to be hoping to knock their wizards one step in the right direction matching spaces uh, on the board with their marbles. But as cool. you can yeah. see, it's not just the wizards making their way down there, it is the witches as well, and you've got a chance to knock them too. It is players' interest to only get the wizard down to the bottom in their destination. Uh -huh. yeah. It's pretty simple. Mm. Players are just going to aim and get in four of their wizards down to the bottom before three witches get there first. Oh, as, wow, that's nice. Yeah. As I said, it's for one to six players, and I love that, it can be played solo as all yeah, two, yeah. as the winning condition stays the same. So it's mm -hmm. not much of an enduring game. It's pitched for five plus. It's got a full, uh, you can have a full stack of six players inside and it's a nice 15 minute game. Mm -hmm. So it was up against two other awesome titles as well. So if you're looking for more recommendations for child friendly titles, do check out the nominees out on the Spiel website. But we've not got too long as well until the other two are announced. That's the Kenner Spiel and the Spiel Des Jars. Uh, winners uh, and that's coming on the 16th of July uh, and there's some great titles up as well from the likes of Osprey and Flat Out Games for them so yeah yeah I think this is a flicky game it looks like dexterity rolling well, dexterity but yeah because you roll the, the the marbles from the top mm -hmm. and then they'll hit the different things and they'll oh there's uh, I'd miss the marbles yeah. the, will, the marbles. they're called Will of the Wisps so you get knocked marble and they'll knock them right yeah. 
the thing know, is, I quite, completely yeah. blanked those even on that page, and I'm going. <laughs> in I'm, how I'm, do they? Yeah. Trying, trying to work out whether or not it was flicking them one that, step at a time, but yeah. but that's well, think, oh, that's even more irritating because it's like a bag of tailboard. Then yeah, yeah. yeah. I, ha- I have a I have a bag of tailboard back at my parents' house. Of course you do. I love that game. Um, but um, the thing I, I really like about this is that it actually it takes all those boxes that the the, the Kinderspiel always does, where mm, it's yes. like it's a kids game that's very easy to dive into because it's a very simple concept. You need to get the witch, uh, the wizards to the bottom before the witches. But then it throws in some really interesting little twists mechanically where you've got to work out pathing and you've got to yeah. work out where you're going to send the marbles, the will of the wisps and all that kind of stuff. So it takes into a little bit to that next level with strategy. I think it's really cool. So that is a really awesome, mm-hmm. I think that's a w- really worthy winner. Oh man, I can, I, well, hopefully we'll be at Spiel this year and I'll, I want to go and... Oh, I'd be definitely oh, up for playing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a marble... There you go. It's in motion. Which roughly from behind. <laughs> Look it's at the vibration motion. on that head. Yeah. That that blue wizard witch. slash yeah. witch looks very familiar. Isn't she in Disney? Haven't I seen her before? Is that um, the blue witch from... I, I, it's, it's I, 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 all I remember is it being right? animated. I just remember... It is quite f- familiar. A club blue yeah. witch. Yeah. I think oh, generic blue... Bad yeah, green yeah, face, yeah, 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 maybe yeah. obvious, but yeah, I'd definitely give this a go. I think, as well as that, is if the best thing with dexterity games, as well, is it. I found I've put a lot of kids' games into my adult notes as well, just to oh, yeah, I love uh, kids said, <laughs> oh, I put them as warm ups, so, uh, kind yeah. of so, so many, yeah. It's a lot of fun. I'd definitely be, yeah, bringing this one. As I said, if you're looking for recommendations, uh, though, these awards do come at their highest, so definitely worth having a look. Okay, dokey. And sticking with magic for a final news story. Oh, this week, ben. yeah. Uh, so from Magic Mountains to Arcane Cataclysms, um, a new box set has been announced by Games Workshop for Warhammer Age of Sigma. Don't worry, the Mortal Realm still exists, even though we've been in 30k and 40k for about what seemed like a millennium. Um, so uh, this is a new box set that will see the uh, Lumineth Realm Lords fighting against the disciples of Zench or Zinch, however you want to say it. I think they say <laughs> Zinch now. Um, but yes, uh, this will come with two new plastic models leading the factions. Um, so you have the Sinari Enlightener, who you see there in the artwork who is a mix and match of uh, magical and martial prowess, who is going to be going up against the Changeling, who a lot of people will remember from Warhammer Fantasy Battles, um, now has a new revamped plastic miniature with this little tiny fellow on his shoulder. <laughs> As everyone on social media said, that guy in the helmet is literally just saying to everybody, he won't shut up, he just keeps <laughs> talking. It's impossible to get any sleep. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah. So those two uh, spellcasters are going to be leading the way alongside the Venari Dawn Riders, the Venari Blade Lords, and the Venari Aloran Sentinels. You know, you had to speak German. I have to speak Mortal Realms. For well anything. done, Ben. You're doing awesome. well. Uh, and now you're going up against the Zangor Enlightened, the Zangors themselves. So you're kind of like beast men, uh, and also the Karak Athletes as well. That a lot of people will remember from the Silver Tower. Uh, back in the day when that released for Warhammer Quest. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's a bunch of models in the set and those two new plastic heroes leading the way uh, alongside a booklet that will sort of take you through the narrative of the arcane cataclysm and the unfolding story within the mortal realms and all that good stuff as well, which I think is kind of cool. Um, I actually really, I think the um, scenario in Lightning looks really cool. I would ditch the helmet. Ditch the helmet. Have the, just have the cool hair. I love that massive ponytail. I think that's really cool. Very Yeah, helpful. that's awesome. Very nice. Um, and then, of course, you've got the changeling as well, uh, who's coming in. So yeah, um, that's a lot of pe- a lot of people. I think have been coming around to the idea of the uh, Lumineth Realm Lords. I think a lot mm-hmm. of people ditch the helmets and go for different ones, um, mm. but they seem to have hit on a little bit of that kind of old school high elf aesthetic, where you've got your sword masters, just with a little bit of a mortal realms thing going on. You got your silver helms, but with a mortal realms thing going on. And then you got your sort of like Lothar and Sea God and that kind yeah. of thing. But with all that kind of stuff, so yeah, um, you know, it's a it, this could be a good box set if you want to dive in and play as either of these factions within uh, Warhammer Age of Sigma. The the change, I really love the new Changeling model. I think I think mm. it's um, I think it's really cool. I liked the it's old one. Fun. I thought it was really cool. Sort of like the massive, huge chaos armor and all that kind of thing was very nice. But I like that they've made it a little bit more dynamic here. You still got the same design for the blade, the magical rune blade, and that kind of stuff. 
Um, and it's really nice looking at the back of it where like that the little kind of like minion on the side of him is like stroking his helmet, sort of like it's yeah. this arm yeah. that looks a bit <laughs> random to me. I, I want thought he was this turning arm his doing. head. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Are you not seeing what's going on over so there? This way, Can you, you not see this? <laughs> it's it's the other arm, his spare arm, and I just feel yeah. like he could be doing something with that. Yeah. yeah, but it looks awesome though. It's yeah. the uh, it's the little creature in the back that definitely likes it. Wait, I, I, the, well, this tiny wasted arm here. Yeah, that I one. Like, yeah. I like, yeah, I like to think that's not the little creature. I think that's actually being controlled that's by the big fellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got one one regular and then one tiny yeah. T Rex like arm, yeah. and then the little fellow's got yes of both. But the, yes. the thing the thing that's really nice about it is I think it brings back that almost fun element to chaos, which I think is what a lot of people mm. kind of liked back in the day as well, where you've got sort of yes, this is serious, and these guys will basically destroy everything in their way. Mm. But there's also a little bit of a quirky thing to them at the same time. And I think yeah. Zench has always had that in spades anyway. Um, so it's nice to see that brought back. Well, there was a really nice Chaos Sorcerer that looked like the the little um, shoulder Peter on that guy's uh, body. Where it didn't have the uh, <laughs> didn't have any eyes, it was just yeah, the, yeah. the mouth and then the the eyeless head. Although mm-hmm. it did have a couple of divots where it's eyes I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was really nice. I believe he came on a flying disc, yeah, pointing with a mace actually. So mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, and nice little entry point there. Obviously, it continues the storyline and the narrative of Age of Sigma. So if you're interested in that, you can maybe go and check that out too, which is really cool. But um, yeah, just another one of their cool box sets. This obviously means that because these two <laughs> factions are getting this box set. I would assume we're going to see a couple of battle times. So we're going to see an updated Lumineth Realm Lords mm-hmm. one and an updated one for the Disciples of Zench as well, or Zeech. How do you want to say it? Tell me in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> is it Zolch? Simon? Is, is it Zolch? <laughs> Simon was one I once heard. <laughs> you know. By the way, that's who she reminds me. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And on that note, our news is over. <laughs> I'll just have a quick swish. And when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the Kickstarters. Okay, we're back and we're going to be checking out a couple of Kickstarters and kicking things off free. You have been taking a look at Steamforge. Yeah, so we spoke about this one a few weeks ago and I'm really excited to see the Epic account arrange just expand this and new adventures on the local and more casual, messy style. So Epic Encounters Local Legends takes players on a pub crawl, really. So you go through tavern to tavern and you keep your ears open for good crack and and a local beast within the facility. And the campaign includes 10 different taverns. They're all themed uniquely from like a luxurious gambling den to a haunted and supernatural resting in. And you might be stumbling across an adventure by accident in the pub or you might be set to create a name yourself as a local legend and most of us have taken our eyes off the prize when when we've entered a classic fantasy tavern and I'm usually (laughs) off finding a pint or eyeing up some convenient pickpocketing really but the atmosphere is usually buzzing as you know and there's shady NPCs and questionable drinks and and there's usually a really unique bar fight that happens like almost every Thursday or something like that and there's there's pubs and taverns are in that are they're a hot spot for gossip and if you're on the hunt for your next contract or bounty and you just need to go to a small town so along the introduction of the Taverns, you've got 60 NPCs to get to know on a first name basis. You've got portraits, narrative hooks, their own lore, backstory. Um, there's no need to create just your own pub full of retro rates when it's already been done for you and it's coming okay. straight out the box. So if you want to get involved in exploring some of the narrative in the individual NPCs as well, there is a campaign running on the campaign um, where you can vote and uh, say what you'd like uh, for the NPCs and the narrative of them. There are 38 different miniatures available on this one as well as part of the campaign too, which are only available as part of the core pledge and the all-in. Ten of these minis, ten, are your big boss, bad guy monsters. And they look incredible. So each tavern is going to have their own local legend to explore. And that might be a pester in Albert or a revenging band of sea pirates uh, or bloodthirsty vampires. Uh, If you do go all in, you'll gain access to two additional pubs, which are part of a Kickstarter exclusive. So 
there are four different pledges. Uh, if you do want to just get involved digitally, just to get hold of some stuff that is a digital only pledge as well, you can do that. But each tier obviously brings you more and more. If you just want to go on a pub crawl, you can. There is a taverns in pledge where you just get your taverns only. There's a core pledge that gets you four different encounter sets. You get your 14 miniatures, your maps, your rules, your books. And the all-in will give you absolutely everything. You get the full set of 10 taverns, your adventures, the add-ons, miniatures, all of the books, and it is pretty hefty. And they have said that they, they are holding massive discounts uh, during the campaign uh, to what they're going to be priced at retail. So if you do love your epic encounters, you'll have access to getting this a lot cheaper if you're going to wait for it for when it does come in, especially in the all-in pledge. Uh, there's no stretch goals uh, that are unlocking day by day. Uh, there are some little add-ons like you've got a DM screen and some dice. The dice are really nice. The dice are gorgeous. Or if you, as I said, if you wanted to get absolutely everything, you've got to go do it via the e Kickstarter exclusive, which are only part of the all-in but it is completely ready to play outside of the box as it is for 5e, but there's no reason yeah, yeah. where you can put this anywhere else. There's no reason why you can use this as inspiration for elsewhere. Mm. It's it's a pretty hefty campaign. And it's just, for me, really nice to see the Epic Encounters range uh, expanding. As I said, something to a little bit more casual, not over grand dark in campaign. As I said, it might be something that a DM would implement into a small bit. We're going to go to this pub and let's throw off uh, the gang a bit. But yeah. The it's, fact um, you can drop in any of the encounters into just a tavern. So if you're already yeah. running a campaign, because let's face it, nearly every Dungeons yeah. and Dragons campaign in the history of mankind has started in a tavern. Um, that's interesting. I also quite like the fact that they've come up with pub games, tavern games, and there's right. a different one for each tavern, which means that's really you've cool. got a game within a game. Yeah. So you, you you could be in this local tavern and then some wise guy yeah. is trying to get you to play their their local version of whatever it is, Pazak or uh Dejaric. It's like Gwent, isn't it? Wars. Gwent. There you go. There you go. Star Wars. Yeah. It, it's, it does very remind me of this Witcher. You're going out, you're going to a pub, you're grabbing a contract, you're going out you're killing the legend, you're coming back, you could get paid, who knows? But it's very, it does seem very Witcher-esque if you're into um, that ilk of things, uh, going out for contracting. The thing that I quite liked about it was that my question when when we were initially covered with this was how are they going to make this any different from the normal Epic <laughs> Encounters boxes? But obviously they've put everything in the one. <laughs> yeah. They've got all the extra stuff in there as well. So I can see why they went to Kickstarter with this rather than just doing it as a traditional uh, epic epic encounters release, which I assume they're going to be doing later, as you say, anyway, when it yeah. comes to retail, just with a few different tweaks here and there. But I think this sounds like a great idea. I think it does. Really cool. like, the miniatures are really cool. The little um, yeah, yeah. the little ghostly spectres are very the, adorable. The, the ghostly ones that look like they've been drawn by... Little sheets on. Things, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're yeah, the little yeah. sheets that have been twisted. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they were great. Have they, have they said they which of them are the Kickstarter exclusive ones? Yes, keep scrolling down. Scroll They're down. at the bottom. Ah, so okay. they're your regular ones. And then the last two. The ones with the little cane ones. next to them, I guess. Yeah, yeah keep going. There we okay, go. Right. So there you go. that one with the free. The Velvet Dreams Club and, and the Drafty Rabbit. Drafty Rabbit <laughs> with the stone throwing giant. Yeah. But then yes. the other eight are all uh, are all going to be available all right until later on. Yes. I think that's a really I think that's really cool. I think Thanks. the idea of because a lot of the times when it comes down to sitting setting up a campaign, you can get that thing of, okay, well, why? How? Why? How am I going to get them to the next city? Mm. Kind of thing. But if you give them the promise of like, there are contracts and everything in the next city along, and you've heard tales of this strange creature and this amazing pub and that kind of thing, your gang of adventures is probably going to be like, cool, more beer and more monsters to slay. Let's go, you know, check it out. So. I think it's a really, really nice starting point to not get lost in a tavern. I yeah, think it's yeah. it gives you guidance of something to do. I think it's a really good idea for a DM as well. If they want to take everything out of the box and use it exactly how it is, brilliant. But if they want to tailor it to how they want it, it's great reference inspiration. Yeah. Grounds you in a home base as well when you're in a particular location as well, rather than, yeah. you know, we're going to go sleep in the wild. <laughs> oh, look at, look. Yeah. A night hack. And it's, it's little it's, tiny dust it's, bunnies. It's, yeah. <laughs> It just looked like they've wrung out some uh, yeah. some cloths. <laughs> but you could also do it as an introduction. 
yeah, yeah. for the party. So, I mean, one of the best parts of uh, From Dust Till Dawn was when they all are in the bar <laughs> and then everything kicks off. There's vampires everywhere. And at the end of it, there's only like five people standing. And that's like, your fighter. It's your, your, your band. And yeah, that's, yeah. That's great because otherwise you get this thing, especially for uh, a new group. And it's like, how do you know each other? And there's a lot of why are we sticking uh, together? Kind of yeah, thing. there's a lot of scratching of heads and, and trying to work out a reason. Whereas if they don't know each other, they're in the tavern doing their thing, and then the encounter begins. Yeah, <laughs> and that's how they know it. By the end of it, they've had to watch each other's backs, and the only ones left standing are, are themselves. Uh, and now they go, oh well, you know, you work quite well in a fight. Uh, oh. I, uh, you know, I could see you around a bit more. It's a perfect. It's a perfect chance if you've got a bard for them to start some stories, isn't it? It's, it's just. It's oh, a I thought you meant murder yeah. the bard before it well, exploded the area, <laughs> and made it inhabitable to life for the next hundred. Hide years. behind the great mound of dead bards. <laughs> yeah, it's, they are bards. I mean, they are the the atomic uh, version for um, for Dungeons and Dragons. But yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah. Really interesting and uh, mm-hmm. nice, nice bit of pubbage. Yeah, everybody loves a good tavern visit, yeah. don't they? Everybody does. Whenever you get to a town, it's like, where you off to? Pub? Oh, always. Yeah. Yes. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Yeah. yeah. Every, every respect. <laughs> there are seven days left on that, and it yeah. is massively funded uh, from Steamforge already. So that's quite nice. <laughs> Who likes that? Our second, because we didn't have a 3D printing, thought we'd throw you a boom with this. Oh. See how generous I am to all of you at home. Even Jerry picked this be. as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Jerry vibe. This is because um, Matthew did a project about it in our project oh, system, well, and I, I stumbled across <laughs> it. Uh, so this is X Terrain. This is the second Kickstarter they've done. The first one was Fantasy. We'll get to that. Um, but it's from Deco Quest Workshop. <clears throat> it's a set of STL files for sci-fi, post-apocalyptic, um, oh, wow. cyberpunk. A couple of interesting things about it is it is lightable. There are LED things in there. Um, yes. And I quite oh. quite geniusly put together. The other thing is um, they've been designed to use essentially acetates, colored acetates or gel sheets, if you will, so that you can change the color of windows and stuff. And it's very, again, very simply put together. It's just slide in, slide out. So nothing complicated. And that is genius. Um, Partly because all of this is is designed to go for an FDM printer and to have no supports. They're 100% support free. You put them on your, your magic and machine and just press the button <laughs> and it does it without having to worry about trimming stuff off and the like uh he has magnetized bits but some of them may need a bit of glue to, to sort of slam them together but otherwise you're good to go there are a few big skulls not little teeny tiny skulls but big skulls you'll see in places um which give it a a 40k adjacent feel shall we say um, but on the whole, there's nothing that really sets this into one universe or the other. They're nice, chunky pieces of kit. And you can see the LEDs lit up like Christmas in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, well, scroll you through. Ooh. I've kept this project open because people may have realized by now I hate Kickstarter and it's inability to put big pictures in. And <laughs> I know you can, but the project has big pictures. Um, so we can have a look at them in a bit more detail in there anyway. Uh, but when we get down to it, there's a whole host of stuff. There are stretch goals aplenty. Uh, some are, will be unlocked very shortly. At the time of filming, he's like forty pounds off funding, and Ooh. there are be nice, huh? <laughs> seventeen days left. So I imagine yeah. it will. Uh, but it's a mixture of, of big buildings and scattered train, and even the scattered train is fairly chunky scattered train. So things like the generator there, you can see a yeah. twenty-eight mil figure. Nice place just to hide behind. Yeah. <laughs> and things like the generator has this LED internal into it. You can see there, that's a little 3D representation of the LED system. Um, it's that little triforce up there that I just saw. Uh, it looked like a little, There you go. There you go. Up a bit. 
any oh, yeah, DC well, stuff yeah, above yeah. it. <laughs> All right, no, that's the on the on the on the little oh, power pack thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's it's called like a Celestrian triangle or something. It's where you half the distance between two points on an edge and plot. Anyway. Um <laughs> not even a link, it's not. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, link. Anyway, there's um so far there's things like the fortress bunker and checkpoint unlocked. Uh or not unlocked in the core pledge uh that has things like these massive missile turrets for anti air on them. Um I love how chunky these are. Everything they is. Are. But yeah. It's built for FDM. It does say you can use uh, SLA. Is that no, 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 the resiny type stuff? But who knows? Right. Uh, but you may need to go into <laughs> un- quite heavy slicer programs and do stuff. Oh, I right. say it's it's tricksy magic that I don't I don't care for. Yeah. So the one that, that prints it for you rather than puts it in a bath, the filament one. Sure. The filament one. If you, you say so. If you say so. <laughs> uh, we've got things like big containers where sides uh, open up and, and mm. top comes off so you can get access to them. That's oh, like there. that's, that's the, the thing. The pieces look gameable, which is nice. Like there's a lot of room yeah. within the outside things rather yeah. than it just being like a normal sized, you know, cargo container mm. where you'd be like, I've put my miniature in and I only shake it out. <laughs> things like, even things like this, the pod. Now you can see the little 28 mil figure there. Oh yeah. Clicking yeah. It oh, buttons, wow. And it looks massive. Yeah. And there's the little 20 oh, nice. inside the pod, and again, looks massive. But then when they've actually put in a miniature into that on a base, you realize how much more room it takes up. Yeah. yeah. So it has a sort of an over, oversized feel, but it means if you're playing something like 40K or that, it should of, work uh, where, where they're more 30, or upwards, well, 32, yeah, yeah. 40 32 in some description. Yeah. Um, uh, they'll work for that as well. Two quite. Orbs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, the gel paper glass uh, is particularly fun. I really That's like really the idea cool behind idea. it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can see just how chunky some of these bits and pieces mm-hmm. are from his actual pictures. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and open cool. up a rake of these pictures because it makes my life so much easier than having <laughs> to look at tiny pictures because I hate tiny pictures on Kickstarter. They're quite chunky. They're lovely. They're not delicate looking. No, no, they, these are, you don't want delicate when you're going no. to gaming with stuff all the time. Uh, and the fact that you've got things like this, the portal is particularly nice. Mm. It reminds me of something, but I can't think what. <laughs> I, I was I was looking at it, I was thinking how cool this stuff would be for kind of alien style. Yes, um, from ETSC type. Yeah, like you can imagine this being some either like alien technology yeah. made by the Prometheans or something, or something that Wayland has salvaged and built on and all that kind of stuff. You could do terrible, some really cool things with Wayland that, yeah. Utani. Scumbags, yeah. total scumbags. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see there, I mean, there there's detail of plenty on them, but at the same time, it's brutal enough. I mean, I'm fairly certain you could fit a base between those steps on that ladder and actually have your model climb that yeah. without worrying about breaking the rungs off, um, which is one way of doing it. And I mean, that that looks like a plague. <laughs> looks like a stage one plague, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the massive fortress door there, I mean, that is going to stop a Mack truck. One of the, the interesting things for me, and I've mentioned it already, was the LEDs. Yes. Um, I'm going to skip on a little bit to find things like the LED system because... When I see lighting, I go, oh, lighting's great. I'm not about to start doing soldering and wiring, and Mm -hmm. he hasn't either. Essentially, see there, the LED beacon. So your LED, that's a little 3D render, comes out at the top. But if you look, it's actually like a a coin slot, and there's a little divot on either side. So you just put the watch battery in, and then the LED goes either side, and that makes the contacts. There's no wiring. So and when you're easy. done, you just pull them out again. Uh, and it's the same for not just these, but all of it. So the lamppost wow. where it's it's actually horizontal. Again, it's just LED goes on either side of your battery and you push it into the slot and then you just stand it upright and put the cap on it. That's or again, awesome. you have your street light lighting yeah. down. And that that in and of itself is is worth uh, you know all the money to be thrown at me because <laughs> I've done some minor amounts of soldering and I hate it and it goes mm. everywhere and other people wouldn't even give it a the time of day. So being able to, if you wish, light your stuff, but light it so simply um, that, you know, you're not having to worry about it and then you're having to worry about switching on, switching off. No, you just pull the LEDs out when you're finished. 
uh, and, really and that's cool. it. And the batteries can just sit in there until the next time you plug the LEDs in. Um, oh, cool. Swapping them out is just, you know, a, a doddle. So a lot of bits and pieces in here, as you can see, in the initial starting pledge. Yay. Uh, which will allow you to build up a fairly sizable mm -hmm. tabletop for whatever it is you have to be doing. Um, when you get, uh, also, by the way, I love the fact that he's added in these things like, what's that smell? Uh, <laughs> you'll, see, you'll see it on the stretch goals as well, um, because he, he's got a, a sense of humor akin to my own tracking speed test. Run as fast as you can. <laughs> um, but the keeping your precious things safe, like weapons. Um, the oh no, no. If anybody's of a certain age and can remember the, I want to say it was a French version of Ulysses. Ulysses. It was like in the far future. It was retelling the Odyssey, but in space. Do you, right. You've not seen this because you're so young. No. You know, was a tiny little robot who ran about with Ulysses' son. Essentially, it was him, uh, but they'd been sirened up. Everybody else on the ship but uh, were floating up near the ceiling somewhere in suspended animation. And it's no, no, but it's an evil mecha robot version of Nuno with a Terminator hand and an alien tail. So, you know, <laughs> has there been slight 80s influence in there? Um, from Maybe Anthony? just I, a bit. I think there may be just a little teeny tiny bit. Uh, but <laughs> stretch goals wise, you've got things like Victor Secrets, which is a dice box. The whole of Destiny. The whole of Destiny, <laughs> a dice tower. Uh, the Choo Choo. It's a little half a tree. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing him push on. This is his second Kickstarter. Uh, his first one, as I've said, we would get to it. His first one was the Fantasy Grimness Fortress. Currently, you can essentially late pledge to get a reduction in it. Um, so I actually have that one open because he's on my mini factory. It may be one we have to come back to in the future yeah. as a, a 3D printing. A little bit of a better look at it all, yeah. Yeah, for sure. but for the princely sum of $47, you get the full grimness fortress in its entirety oh, uh, nice. which is a heck of a thing that'd be good uh, for those local legends yeah yeah <laughs> you can literally build your town walls around so. your tavern mm. if you wish uh That's and there's gorgeous. there's a ton of stuff in here it's a stunning bit of work um so his first first kickstarter was last year bit of feedback from his supporters from the first one about file naming and things like that because he sort of ran most of it through many many factories so it's every every day is a school day as they say um mm. so he's, he's learned from that so this one should run a bit smoother uh that was his first sort of run on it and it you know it supplied on time it looks fantastic it was just little things like uh how you download the files and the names of the files because apparently once they're up in my mini factory that's it um <laughs> so if you're after a load of sci-fi terrain or fantasy terrain uh, it's worth checking out Deco Quest um, they? yeah. and their X terrain section because why would you not want to know now? What an awesome idea. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I just I absolutely adore the, the LED system that they put in. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems so simple. I can't believe it was the I haven't slotting. seen it before. Yeah. Just it was the slotting for me. The, 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 uh, Window, the coloured windows, the oh, doors, the, the and then adding those. They were that was everything so simple and so easy yeah. that it's genius. Yeah, it did. it's a that really is great set of stuff just to uh, to fill your tabletop. The but, LED and the window looks fantastic as well. Don't yeah. Remember. So there are seventeen days left on that, and uh, like I say, it's not a kick in the bum off being funded as things stand. Uh, so that's your lot for kickstarter slash 3d printing see we managed to squeeze one in anyway for this week uh we're going to take a quick swish and when we come back we're going to be exploring the spring clean challenge and announcing the winners all right then it's been a long road traveled to get us from at the very start of spring all the way through now to summer well, you're going to Not start there. singing the uh, intro to Enterprise then. It's been a long road getting from there to here. <laughs> Scott Bakula was uh, quite a leap. Not Star Trek. That's how that one goes. But uh, we've got here, we've plucked out some winners. 
mm-hmm. who'll be getting sweet, sweet dollars, dollar, dollar mm. bill, y'all. Is that what you yeah. kids say? Yeah, yes. so uh, <laughs> winners will be getting £50 on tabletop store vouchers, and the runners-up will, get, will be getting £25 mm. on tabletop store vouchers. So watch out for your names, folks. Pay attention. Watch all of this. <laughs> there may be questions later. Yeah, yeah. Who knew it was a quiz? Um, we're going to kick things off by looking at the selection for best skill. Uh, mm-hmm. We've a couple of couple of mentions, sort of. We've a couple of vulnerable mentions for for most of them, actually. To be fair, and and I could have went on for quite some time with the honourable mentions. Jerry lives in the project system. I, live, I do live in the project system. <laughs> and it was very, very difficult um, yeah. because you see people doing wonderful work and you're going, that's great. How can I how can I pick these apart? Close my eyes, toss a coin, roll a dice, none of those. So, uh, yeah, it was tricky getting them down, uh, even just getting them down to five to have a look at, never mind the the three eventual sort of prize winners um but we're going to kick things off with dao chi which i'm fairly certain is how it's pronounced um and this is an honorable mention for skill um so a bit of marvel crisis protocol from dao and it it was a a beautiful thing there's a um, quite nice sort of background to it i'll let people read in their own time but there was a lot of care and attention went into building up new york city itself um some of which comes via the medium of 3d prints uh, yeah and yeah. he does name and shame where he got them from uh and also then the detail of how they went about painting them up and and finishing them off uh, which is really really cute oh so you know there's been some terrific work done just on getting the the actual backdrop because for marvel crisis protocol so much of the game is based around the actual scenario mm-hmm. uh being fought out on the streets being able to slam people into buildings or hit them yeah. with a car or whatever it happens to be uh terrain and scenery is, is not just needed but it's, it's integral the to the, the yeah. game you know if you yeah. just start slamming people into buildings uh you can have so much fun but then when you start destroying the buildings around them it changes how the game plays turn to turn and all of a sudden some sneaky get uh like hawkeye hiding on the top of a building discovers the building has been knocked out from below him and or you know (laughs) maybe a shot wasn't possible from iron man originally but all of a sudden the impediment's gone so so there's really nice bits from uh getting the, the backdrop done uh and that includes things like even the incidental pieces like the stop signs and, and that sort of thing. Very nice. Going yeah. in and painting those or adding graffiti and posters to a lot of the buildings as well. Um, so we have the likes of the uh, little coffee stand, wherever it lives. There's a bit of graffiti up oh, the side of a, a dustbin. Really well done, yeah. 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 But here we have the bugle itself. So oh, that's the little right. bugle, the bugle corner shop. That, with the comic books in it that he reduced yes. comic book covers and stuck right. them on because that that's just a little set of nondescript upright book things yeah in plastic uh, so sticking those on again more tagging going on that's fab uh, it's all the way around us look captain america if you want yeah really nice stuff but it Aww. was it was just a thing of beauty and then gets into the models themselves building them up and painting them up and throughout the entire thing Tao Chi also explains where he gets the, the inspiration from or where he got tips from so things like uh, the shield I think came from a Zarastro painting video so you can he you is know, very good, yeah. follow along at home but it was uh, corset and beyond and it was just really nicely done it was it was the whole well, yeah, the whole thing absolutely. part and parcel and uh, that just gets a, a mention unfortunately doesn't get a price because I'm Ooh. I'm that cruel, I, oh. and I'm sure people will now go, "Oh, why that not get?" I I see what you've picked for your winners and runners up, and it's wrong. And I have to say, my choice. <laughs> Do it, be damned. If you got a problem with it, I'll fight you. What a great <laughs> project! Yeah, it's, there's it's, everything in it. It's it's huge. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean that's only halfway. That's still the core set. Later on, you start seeing some of the additions that uh, they've added in since then. Uh, but yeah, so. Honourable mention 
well worth visiting that project and uh, checking it out. We'll Find put the links well. to all the projects yeah. below anyway, we will do, so yes. people yeah. can, can yeah. indulge okay. in them in their own time. Uh, but our second honourable mention is uh, Scribs. And this is, as the title itself says, Spring Clean uh, Miscellany. Nice. Uh, and it really is bits oh, of everything. Um, <laughs> they already won a gold button. They won a golden button, which in many respects is worth more than cash. <laughs> well, to some people anyway. Yeah. Um, but we, like I say, we've we've been here, we've seen this. He's got shields now, which I don't think he had shields whenever we, we looked at the No, button. no, I think we only got to see up to the wizards yeah. and stuff, yeah. Uh, for people who are unaware, Golden Buttons are community spotlight prizes that we give out weekly. Um, and we talk about them at length in the XLBS show on the Sundays uh, for the coming week. So you can come along and see those or look at the uh, the little blog post that Ben does on the, the site. It's a very nice showcase of everybody who's yep. won one in the past as well. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. And Golden Buttons, they can be for anything and everything so it, it can be just nice ideas or it can be battle reports or it can be some awesome piece of paint job it's just whatever takes our fancy on a weekly hey. basis really. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah in this case though these are stonking i've got that oh, miniature, as well. but that miniature has been lying in a box with a lot of other miniatures for me for so long <laughs> that his his lovely aquiline imperial nose is very squashed oh no it's a lead figure it looks like somebody's broke his nose. Yeah, it looks like yeah. he's had a bit of a scrap. Yeah, but th these are the things that are sent to try us. And again, <laughs> it's been a case of digging out old miniatures. I mean, all of these are probably proper, all lead. Proper spring clean challenge in that respect. Yeah, so. All old Warhammer Quest figures. Uh, so a few plastics in there as well, I guess. But yeah. 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 But uh, again. Very nice. Yeah, very uh, interesting little meander through nice. Scribs's back catalogue of figures, mm -hmm. and uh, not just Warhammer Quest. Uh, there are other bits and pieces lurking in there from other companies and ranges. So you see there, Zombie Samurai and Zombie Ashiguri, um, which I think might be from Bushido, but don't hold me to that because there's so many weird and wacky things, and everybody's favourite count, <laughs> Orlock. Account so awesome, they named a whole gang in Necromunda after him. <laughs> <laughs> Although, really, they should have named the Delax after him. Yes, yeah, they're a lot more Delac. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bald headed vampire. But again, really nice seeing just the the various types of miniature and the various styles of painting that Scribs has done. Very because it's so. not, yeah. it's not always the same style on every model. Uh, mm -hmm. Sort of fitting them in to the game that they're playing i suppose yeah. is the best way to put it yeah. so where something needs to be a bit grittier it's a bit grittier when it needs to have a bit more of a, a cartoonish pop as a cartoonish pop um mm -hmm. and things like 15 mil pike and shot always good for a laugh 15s somewhere warren's it is perked up yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it happened ages ago with the leds it's yeah. just oh, definitely that's fact, yeah that is true yeah yeah <laughs> but i mean that's probably about He's probably about as tall as a space marine's grieve, you know. Yeah, so, you know, seeing things like that, it's always nice. Very anybody, cool. Anybody mm -hmm. who's willing to do highlighting on fifteen mil has my yeah. eternal appreciation. And again, only a mention. Only a mention. <laughs> so I'm setting the standard really high for this. You really are, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. It's tense. Uh, yeah. It's tense. It, it is tense. So now we're now we're into the now we are into up, so, yeah. to some of the prize winners. So, uh, P. McKay. Oh, wow. Whoa. And we'll get to that because it's the very last thing in there. Um, but again, an interesting little mix of stuff that's just sort of being dusted off. The most recent, um, which came on the last day of the Spring Clean Challenge, was starting to look at some of the Warlord um, 10 mil Napoleonics for their, their epic. So pinning them up as uh, Prussians. Again, I mean, that's a ridiculous amount of detail yeah. and technique put into 10 mil figures. Um, something I won't be doing. I'm ordering flats from Wow Fun. That's how I'm dealing with 10 mil. Uh, yeah. But lovely piece of work on that. However, it's when we take a look at some of the uh, 28 mil Napoleonics huh. and eventually the, the big diorama piece that you really see uh, the, the sort of the level of talent Oof. in here. Wow. And 
And there's a really nice thing about a cavalry charge, unless you're on the receiving end of it and you have managed to form square. Um, it just looks great. And I like the fact that uh, it's gone to the, the effort of, of having a little light box shot with the background as well. A little bit of cotton wool fluff at the front yeah. and there's some clouds like, in the so background. The I, imagine that's, I imagine that's the smoke of whatever. Of the guns. As well. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Light infantry have just been routed off the tabletop. Yeah. Um, but really, really <laughs> nice set of yeah. Napoleonics. Wow. Lovely, lovely stuff. The horses are painted incredibly as well. Yeah, because horses are a pain in the hole. Yeah. Anyone who's ever had to to paint a horse, they know. I've got a bunch of Rohan to finish. Ugh. <laughs> I, I, That's what stuff it A load of Natal mounted um, infantry. Yeah. Been painting for Blood and Steel. Uh, they all got sprayed and then uh, oil washes on them because I'm far too lazy to bother. <laughs> I'm far too lazy. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. So they were very nice. This chap, uh, and despite your advice not to open too many windows, I will open all the windows. <laughs> you do it. It's a it, Captain. <laughs> so this is a piece of artwork that he's decided to replicate the, the figure. Oh. <laughs> so there's actually a bit of re-sculpting. Oh, cool. Bit of kit bashing and uh, green stuff work. That's really the, nice. The heroic yeah. leader. Yeah. Which I like that, ma ma matching it against the, the art piece. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Hello, horses. Ah. <laughs> there we have uh, the finished piece. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's, again, I mean, horse isn't the right color because that's more of a chest. And the, play, but, you know, we'll, we'll let them away with it. The, the fluffy thing on another word, I don't know what Blim. it's called. Is it plum? That that was your plum easy or enough. cockied, if you know you want to be slightly more clever. But getting some slanties. But yeah, really, really nice. But the thing that that got me, and it's how he started the um, the actual Ooh. project itself. I know it isn't the Cthulhu bust, although we all know I love my Cthulhu. Um, has to be the, I suppose, Lady of the Lake. Yeah, yeah, the one um, we saw in the title band. Yeah, yeah. the. Moistened bent. Wow. That's it's amazing. No, base, no basis of government. <laughs> That's so that delicate. Yeah. With the, I suppose it's a Kelpie, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. Scottish Rising up around the horse thing. Yeah. Wow. The, the weeds. But it's the, the work that's been done to get the see-through look. Yeah, oh, the God, transparency. Yeah. The transparency on, on her chef that's sort of clinging to her skin is the absolutely face. amazing. She's done uh, eyes through a sheet and it still looks yeah. better than any eyes I've ever done. That, what, that, that, wow. Yeah, it was it was just gorgeous. And I also like things like the uh, the fishing line, the sort the of dripping water wire yeah. to get actual dripping water off the, the sort of the kelp itself as it's coming Brilliant. Out. Yeah. As oh, and there's even a water texture base as well. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's the, the whole kit and caboodle. Stunning model. Came together to, uh, oh, to just an amazing effect. <laughs> just so beautiful. Really well done. So gentle to set. Mm. Yeah. So delicate looking. And it's a head, and anybody who's attempted to do this, to do sure. fabric clinging to skin, it is a head melter because you have to work in reverse to how you would normally highlight and shade. Um, so you're getting darker as you go up onto higher levels, uh, which just is incredibly tedious and annoying to do. Non-metallic <laughs> metal on the uh, the sword. As wow. Well. Go, it's wow. Just, it, it just all comes together to make just such an amazing Amazing diorama piece. Absolutely. Look at that. Crazy horses. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan of, of the Osmonds now. Sure. Disturbing <laughs> But yeah, so absolutely stunning. Really well work. done, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and if, only, if only I could have everybody as winners, but unfortunately yeah. I can't, so it just had to be a runner-up. <laughs> Our uh, second runner-up then mm -hmm. is uh, Zoid Pinhead who's been going through a whole host of stuff. And this one, as you can see here, could have easily slotted into tutorial as well, because you can see the amount of work being done here. Uh, but Zoid has been working on uh, Slonia for nice. Warlord. However, they also have a ton of stuff from other companies mm -hmm. and other um, miniatures that predate. So 
things like um, Keltos that did very slay and adjacent or Warlord, uh, sorry, Warlord, War Games Foundry, who had the stuff right. years ago. Um, so they've similar models, but by other sculptors and other styles. Uh, so it's just a, a, an interesting project on the whole, but also the fact that they've managed to get their hands on it and pretty much paint the entire thing throughout the Spring Clean Challenge. It's, yeah. it's literally, I'm going to dig out stuff that's 10, 15, 20 years old, and then also Mix get it with some new stuff at the same time. The new yeah. stuff. And then pick up bits and pieces like these wow. British standing stones from, I want to say they're from Fenris. They might be from Scotia Grendel. Sco Scotia Grendel, I think, um, yeah. So. The, the, there's a mix of both companies for resin stuff. So I love the stonework and it's, then the addition, the, like the attention to detail with the vegetation as well. Mm. I love it. It's almost as if it's been comic book painted as well. It's the thick lines in there as well, the thick black lines in between the muscles, the gradient in between the dark to light. It's so lovely. It's the gentle transition of colour and with the thick lines over the top. It's really, really nice looking. So skip on a little bit down because, as you see, this is a comprehensive, very comprehensive um, project as far as the tutorial goes as well. So you get, get the idea behind how they're painting Amazing. things, the way they were planning on putting it together. Uh, so if you want to follow along, if you looked at it and went, well, you know, that oh. seems to be a very quick and easy way of painting things. I'm just going to steal that. Then you can go in there and just steal wholesale, fill your boots yeah. with his painting techniques. Yeah. For Morians. Yeah. Lloyd shot for Morians. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of butts in Slania as well. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> plenty of time for Lloyd to see the butt. Yeah. That's a heck of a big fishing hook. I dread to think what you'd catch with that. <laughs> Um, but we shall press on. Fugu. The Brock's not from Fugu. Unfortunately, I, I went and found it and currently can't get it. Oh, there you go. That's, there. that's picking up some of this stuff, the older stuff, and playing mm. around with it. Oh. Yeah. You can see there. Very cool. Yeah. Balor of the Evil Eye. That's awesome. There's the inspiration behind the, uh, the miniature. So this is one of the, the newer models from uh, warlord but again you get all of that detail in there and then later on you'll see the keltos not balor balor uh, version as well and it just goes on and on slow fag <laughs> the weird lord it's just a beautiful, beautiful really well project. Done. yeah, yeah. look he got gun button as well <laughs> as is his wanted life. And towards the end, you'll start to see more and more come together oh, because that one's lovely. the whole kit and caboodle has been painted up. I want to get down to some of the, the slains. Yes. There's some of our... Ah, uh, the, the old ones. classic ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So from the old 2000 AD range that they did, yeah. which means he can field them in a variety of ways if he wants. A wicker man. And a wicker man. Just Not missing it. Bees. Edward Woodward. No, no, not that. <laughs> Never that. Not the bees. <laughs> not the bees. I mean, they're I in my goddamn it. eyes. <laughs> no, no, I can't. No. That film never happened. <laughs> and also, the, the Wicker Band's very apt because um, the reason. Maeve is, is very annoyed with uh, Slonya in the comics as he saved her from being sacrificed in a Wicker ah, Man in the comic. Okay. Um, uh, and she was quite prepared to uh, be sacrificed to God. It was her nature. She'd been raised to go that way and was very annoyed when uh, the uh, sacrifice to the goddess was uh, upset by the big man coming in and brutally slaying everybody and stealing her. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can see nice. some Very colourful as well. Yeah and size comparisons and you know it's just again another Impressive. another terrific the two warp slains look at them, look at them go but yeah it it has grown over the course of a couple of months very much so yeah to the point where everything is painted from the initial release so far plus little additionals from his old classic collection as well and even a mammoth Ooh. with a uh, savage orc on on board to be his fremorian, which is, you know, good enough, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Big mouth yeah. thing. Yeah. 
my turn. Wow, very cool. No rules in there for yet, but why not? Yeah. And when he's put alongside the other big blue fish boys, who's to tell which is exactly, the yeah. which is not? Yeah. Yeah. Yay! I don't do <laughs> well done, oh. Mammoth. It's um, bar bar before they went down the wrong path. There's a whole other page, which we just don't have time for, but it it culminates with group shots of of go and explore stuff. that for themselves. Do it. You you really should. And again, just another runner up, which leads us to the winner. Winner. Yeah, we'll go for Best a drum roll, but none of us yeah. can do it. So Ooh, the winner for the scale is uh, Grey Primer. Right. So he has made a Mahler fiend being carted around on the back of a flatbed trailer for reasons that only an orc would understand. Uh, and again, another one that could have come in as a sort of a semi-tutorial um, because it, it starts with bits and pieces being attached. Um, there are even leafs leaf spring um, suspension added to the base for reasons because i mean if you if you happen to want to flick over or look underneath you want to make sure that the yeah, suspension yeah. is correct because that's a very important thing to orcs uh but as a, a scratch building challenge in and of itself it was insane and then once you've got the molarphine strapped to the back of your flatbed you have to start kitting it out with the other bits and pieces uh, to orcify it in ah. some way. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just been an absolute joy watching this one come together. I remember, I think he was talking about this with me. I think we met him at uh, UKGE and he was saying how people have been like, well, you can't capture a mortal fiend. It's like heart demon. It would just sort of like dematerialize. And I was like, yes, but orcs could capture one. <laughs> yeah. Because as we know, orcs, They can use their psychic power to just yeah. keep things around. So, yeah. There's a name for it. It's like gestalt field or something. Isn't yeah. that what the Imperium call it? It's like, it works because orcs think it will work. And therefore, yeah. if orcs think that they yeah. can capture a demon, then they can capture a demon. Um, obviously, being towed up front, by that is a brilliant. I, battle is wagon that, or a truck of some description. Yeah, I think that work, that works so well for me is just the amount of detail that's gone into, like, telling the story of it and yes. making it feel like it belongs. I think is is really cool, and just adding just enough stuff in there to make it orky without it, you know, feeling like it's too over the top and all that kind of thing. Oh wow! Using that chaos knight helmet and everything as well. Is, is there such a yeah. thing as over the top? For well, I suppose no. Yeah, that's no, the it's, booty it's, painted. <laughs> there's so much to look at as well. Everywhere you look, there's something different. Yeah, and once it's... the um, the build was complete, then Grey Primer started to get in and get the the painting down on us. Oh, nice. That's unfortunate. Well, it'll grow back. <laughs> Very nice. And it has again, it's got that bright poppy colours for an orc that they've yeah. splashed on because they love it. But who can be bothered painting or cleaning? <laughs> so once Just... it's on, it's done. It's one and done. Walk away. And uh, <laughs> if it gets grimy, it gets grimy. I like oh. the, uh, I suppose it could be a tool chest uh, oh. or some sort of stowage. Yeah. just containing whatever they happen to have liberated including like, yeah. this monumentally big I was going to say somewhere yeah. uh, an ultramarine's like you can't store the multi-melters next to the munitions <laughs> <laughs> why would you not yeah. that's, that's brilliant absolutely so much detail and Stunking. you know a nice bit of as you say effort put into making sure that the paint absolutely. scheme pops and all that kind of stuff very cool yeah. And then we get into the uh, flatbed itself. And here we see what they would nice. look like. And I mean, most people would leave it there. Both painted. It's a really nice standard. Wow. Hello, Gross. <laughs> You've got all the detail on there. You've got your loot. You, you arrived in the battlefield, kicked the toys out of some chaos, apparently. <laughs> and then went home carrying whatever booty you could. <laughs> and I mean, it's it's a really nice piece um, for the gaming table. But went a step further, and actually, oh, cool! 
went in. Built a proper uh, scenic base for it. Built a, a whole diorama display yeah. for it, yeah. Hello, guys. Amazing. Beautiful pictures as well that he's taken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I keep looking automatically at the stuff at the back. <laughs> That's my focal length. <laughs> I love that. I love that they captured an icon of corn and it just keeps inexplicably oh, yeah, it's still bleeding. Yeah. It's like, what the hell is this in the back of the track? <laughs> Blood <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but the torn up mud. Wow. Bits of detritus, battlefield or otherwise, it's round there. <laughs> the churned earth. It's just a, a gorgeous piece of kit. Yeah. Really well done, Great Primer. Really well mm. done. Absolutely. Bricks. Right. That'll keep them on the straight and narrow. Oh, yeah. Go that's going to do there. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Mother, they're stealing my Molofiend. It's his Mother. hand they've got. Yeah. It's probably. Yeah. Murray, the skull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we wow, go. Wow, that's really cool. Well done. Yeah. So that is the winner of our skill. So, yeah, just to, to reiterate, so the two runners up were. Pima K, one four zero two one five. Zoid Pinhead, and then the winner was Grey Primer. There will be a link to the prize claim form for you to go and claim your goodies. So, there you go. mm. so, yeah. so next up, we're going to crack straight into best tutorial. Like I said, la la. some of these could have been from the previous category. Could have been in here as well. Um, and vice versa, some of these tutorials could easily have got into skill or idea. Yeah. It's, it's, we it's often a hard have that job crossover. I have, yeah. yeah. Trying to decide who goes where and when. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to kick things off with uh, another honorable mention for our tutorials. And this is a Conflict 47, British 8th Army from Space Piracy. Uh, interesting little project. Started off with uh, a sort of thousand point build for bolt action then a thousand point addition for conflict so it could be used in either um and generally when i see conflict it's nearly always set in uh, western europe so for somebody to go you know what i'm going to do i'm going to do take it to the desert desert rats <laughs> yeah uh, and bring the the eighth army in there yeah uh, so it's nice to see these things that normally we see in the sort of the olive drab or uh, sort of dark browns and, and olives just having that really bright khaki paint job on them. It just suddenly looks very sci-fi, doesn't it? It does, yes. yeah. Did you? Yeah. Um, I think it's, the thing that's always quite nice about this is I, I love that it kind of evokes like an idea, like an idea and an image in your, in your head because hmm. when it comes to like Normandy and and the way that you envision that, even with World War, Weird World War, you often just, I, I often just sort of picture it basically the same as we've seen it in TV. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you look at it, when you when you take into account the desert setting, you can imagine like big rolling dunes and then massive mechs walking over the top of them and like the sand okay. moving around and big guns going off and everything like that. So I think it creates a really nice image in your mind of what's uh, what you can dive into when it comes to Conflict 47 with these. So, yeah. yeah. And I don't know what it is, but the um, these droids or bots or mechs or whatever they're supposed to be, I think they really suit the desert camo. They do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, much more than the the British uniform that I often see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fly it in there, uh, yeah. but like I say, the uh, main thing is he breaks down everything. <laughs> yeah, he breaks down everything, so it's in here for yeah. the, the tutorial, and it gives you a good idea of of where they're they're going for and up to, and including the basing. Oh. Um, how they've done the various sort of panel lining and the colors they've used for the uniform and for the flesh tones and to do things like the uh gun emplacement gun emplacement yeah. with its yeah. i suppose tesla like beam energy weapon type thing going on there so it's a, a very simple little project um that just sort of breaks mm -hmm. it down step by step uh which is why it gets a, a delightful little mention from us so that's Horrible the... mention, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and another mini one, but again, another one worth a mention. Yeah. Is uh, Kings of War Armada, mm -hmm. um, and this is Uglib, uh, and specifically, the reason uh, it gets in here is he's decided to do some uh, clever basing type basing, um, 
where he followed along a tutorial he found from it's actually Steve Hildew from uh, Kings of Warfame, Death oh, by cool. Dragons, Death by Dragons. Anyway, um, so he's used the techniques to build up the waves rather than have them sitting on a, a flat sort of base. So it's interesting seeing people pull other people's tutorials and then sort of doing a step by step guide on how they then use their tutorial yeah uh, to put together their uh their base yeah. so you get this sort of rather magnificent step by step i think what's quite nice about that is that it then shows off what was easy and what was hard about following the tutorial that yeah. you followed to make yeah. the tutorial <laughs> <laughs> tutorial section so, yeah. yeah and it gives a really effective fleet at the end of it with it this does crashing wave look to it yeah um which was really really nice very cool i'm a big fan and they've even got a delightful magnetic magnet as well very yeah. nice so that's that's how you get them all onto the uh the tabletop in double without any fashion. breakages <laughs> yeah, yeah. but again it was just a just a very simple little tutorial not a huge amount of of text in it it's it just sort of here's the the video and then here's the colors and step by step that i've used to do it uh so you know nice honorable mention and a, a very striking looking fleet yeah. which kind of makes me want to paint my own so yeah <laughs> one I day won't. one day no rigging no no oh no you don't need rigging all these don't need those don't need rigging no fails go up and down by themselves shit. yeah 100 yeah. percent. magic yeah. uh, but the first of our uh runners up and therefore prize winners is outrider hobbies outrider hobbies he's been doing <laughs> some work on the imperial assault uh, and, and very much when we say dusting things off literally dusting things off <laughs> out with a, a can of air nice. which is very space balls ask yeah, yeah. Air, um to actually get the dust off these things to get back in oh, there wow, and tighten yeah. them up and finish them off there's wow. quite a few of my miniatures probably need blasting off as well i think yeah. <laughs> uh but once the uh, the miniatures themselves have been dusted off, we then get into uh, a step by step guide on how they painted up things like R two and the liners and uh, bits and pieces done to get them onto the tabletop. They even gave even gave C three PO the uh, the chrome leg as well. The correct yeah. chrome legging, yeah. yeah. Uh, what like he should have that everybody forgets the Mandela effect <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's the one. Nope, yeah. that's not the one. That's the one I want there. Oh, that's nice. So I like. I like. I always like it when people break things down and have the paint that they've used alongside it. So yeah. you'd be like, "Ah, oh, so that worked to do that, right? Like, nice and easily." Yeah. Yeah, and then you can press on. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel and did constant Thanks. updates throughout. Oh, so brilliant! Yeah. You've got a obviously a step by step guide if you just follow along the the pictures and text, which is good. But then you can also go in and and he they're like half hour long videos where he's just chatting about what he's done and how he's got up to them and yeah um the bits and pieces he's worked through as well so you get to see things like uh banthas tuscan mm. raiders awesome one Very at a time cool. how do we know they, <laughs> they move in single file to hide their numbers there could be dozens of them off screen and again another no. another extensive project um where it goes through an awful lot of the uh nice. the characters and again, and for imperial yeah. assault and again very in the spirit of spring key challenge in that respect as well so yeah good looking back yeah. at something that actually literally needed dusting off so mm. <laughs> so yeah that's really nice what a, what a cool so, idea yeah. yeah and i like the blend of um step-by-step -step guides and then the the video yeah. chats as well in there because it's always good to have something in the background playing away whenever you're doing your own stuff very much so yeah so there we have oh, Rider Hobbies awesome. and Baby Rancor. Hello, Baby, Baby Rancor. Rancor. Hello. <laughs> Watch out for doors. <laughs> Geller. But yeah, so if you're interested it's in annoying. checking out some Star Wars Imperial Assault, um, it's worth having a look in there as uh, as he literally broke down the Spring Clean Challenge from cleaning to painting to uh, updating everything that's, that's been going on there yeah. so that's our first runner up mm -hmm. uh, next up for the tutorial is a rocky challenge <laughs> and this is by demon sub 
Ah. And uh, again, this was a very, very nice terrain based uh, tutorial. Because Which you went, don't often see actually in a no. scrapping challenge. No. So, yeah. so. no, mostly people people focus on the miniatures because people like miniatures. Uh, there's uh, some bark, cork bark. Yes. By, by Jingo. I almost feel bad that he's covering the cork bark and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it is a case of um, building up a load of terrain for the tabletop to be used for various fantasy sort of games. Yeah. Uh, and again, literally step by step with all the images all the way through, whether he's adding in the uh, ballast from uh, probably a model. Yeah. 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 Uh, to add a bit of texture and definition to it, uh, to building up the paint jobs themselves. There's all of it in there. So from primer through to coloration. Uh, and again, and this is an important one, especially for new people, whenever they start painting stuff up, they have a tendency to reach for the small little colored pots. Yes, they're okay for highlight, but if you're attempting to go to, big. to really <laughs> go Just to, acrylics. Go to Tesco, craft, Sainsbury's, Tesco, a hobby shop, range. craft world, whatever. And Buy all of those for about a fiver. <laughs> yeah, big, big <laughs> tubes of acrylics are definitely the way to go. Yeah. Um, because you can use them for painting, for making washes, which I think the umber and black end up being sort of washed on <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to get this the sort of the shading effect, mm. um, as well as actually just covering your, your terrain because... That's really cool. By yeah. God, you'll pay a fortune for it yeah. and then um the additions of clump foliage afterwards yes and all the grass to sort of set it yeah. off and doesn't need a, a huge amount of explanation um but just the the photo montages you can see yeah. exactly what's been done and see where it comes in all over the place Hello, Nest. Well, so I, th I think a lot of people sometimes get feel daunted by the idea of painting terrain and so having someone oh. break down the steps of doing it I think is a really cool thing. So. I think this is just a really nice example of how how you don't have to be so delicate and how you don't have to be so precise when you're making terrain. This is yep. it's this messy job and it, it just looks like yeah, he's had yeah. a great job and it's come out looking fantastic. <laughs> it's all about the coverage. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, it's all about the coverage. So it's, it's yeah, just a very nice, well simple... Well done, Demon Club, yeah. Very uh, much so. Terrain mm -hmm. tutorial and uh, a great way mm -hmm. to fill a, a table with a load of line of sight blocking tree in, in not too long a phase. Mm. Which leads us to our Winor for the tutorial. And our Winor is Lonor <laughs> um, with the Dreadball Spring Clean Hobby Challenge. Now this, <laughs> you can see we're, we're oh, back in Feb. Um, and the idea, idea. To paint, <laughs> the idea was to paint everything from Dreadball. Uh, so he had the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. And this is one of, if not the most comprehensive uh, projects slash wow. tutorials that I've seen where it lists everything, the state of current, you know, whether they're in, built, painted. So you can follow along with where it's at, like 168 built, 133, sorry. 160 owned, 133 built, 114 painted from this. But it it goes into shocking lengths and details as the miniatures are catalogued, cleaned, assembled, Mikey. and then painted. So it's not just a tutorial about the painting side it's also, also a tutorial about collecting, about the yeah. collecting <laughs> yeah, yeah. and cataloging and building the the actual forces mm -hmm. and then Blimey you now. get start to finish okay. oh yeah oh very very much so like i said yeah. this is this is the beginnings where i mean those are dreadball extreme plus see some dreadball robots from third edition and speedball characters who were kickstarter exclusive these are just a couple of the teams and uh, sideline, I suppose, people that you would get. He also has some of his original sort of paint jobs, some of which stayed, some got a touch up, some got stripped back, start again. Yeah. Um, but you get this massive, massive run through. If anybody's interested, there's the guy from Penny Arcade. Um, oh, yeah. 
Ta-da. Pac-Man. Um, that's what he would look like if I took him out of a box and painted him. Wow. <laughs> I don't need to know. I can see it. But if anybody's interested in Dreadbull, it's a, a great resource. If anybody's just interested in sci-fi aliens and paint jobs, this is also particularly good because, again, you get the combination of the text and photos and the fact that you can go in and, and literally, so instead of having a wall of text with the colors, which he does do as well, you can see the incremental steps used with, you know, purple flesh tones based with Vallejo model color mm -hmm. and the model color number violet to be washed with null oil so it's it's incredibly detailed uh even down to using things like the color shift paints painstakingly like well done yeah, yeah. So. and uh, i'm going to go out there now that's probably the best photograph that shows color shifts shifting color that i've ever seen i've tried to take pictures myself and it doesn't matter how you do it yeah normally it's a pain in the ass to do it <laughs> yeah you get one color and yeah. then you're left telling people yeah but it's actually purple as well whereas here you can actually see the silver into purple or the green into sort of the that, brown that brownish color i don't know how i managed it space magic probably <laughs> <laughs> but it's it goes from that and we're just going to skip on a little bit because there's a the, lot <laughs> every, every week is a team or every entry is a team or a, a character um, where they've gone back and used examples from other guides they've included the guide so if you don't have that issue of white dwarf blah or if you haven't seen that online tutorial then you can find them in here and then use them for yourself so using the privateer press how do the red armor is in there using a toilet brush um for being terrible is in there i think that was actually a, a last place prize for a, a <laughs> but anyway um but yeah it's it's massively massively comprehensive which means it's a great place to stop off if you're ever interested in how you paint <coughs> alien flesh how you paint colored armor how you do wood effects elf flesh human flesh whatever it happens to be and it runs all the way through until i want to say it was like the 19th of june it finished just before the spring clean challenge Oof. finished or may have finished on the day itself and by the end of it there are most if not all of the uh, miniatures are painted so Easy. they could literally <laughs> land down at, they could literally land down at the club and supply whatever big guys or teams are required for people on the play it. it's also very handy if he plans on playing um overdrive overdrive the, the shark <laughs> he's got the big guys because they also work for uh dreadball as well so Brilliant. and that this episode was brought to you by dry brushing um, <laughs> it's i mean it's just it's just everything i want to see in a tutorial it takes all the boxes mm. with the exception of actually recording himself in video showing some of the techniques but being able to come in and see the guides and look at the guides and see the techniques and read how long or progress through it and how they've all turned out is just sensational and you get to see just so much there's that uh sure i'm sure that's space magic to get the actual color shift on there nice magic really well put together Laura. Well yeah. absolutely stonking that's stonking intense. tutorial mm. and definitely one for anybody to take a look at if you're planning on painting anything ever oh yeah because Chances are there's something in there, including cake. Cake. Yeah. <laughs> cake is the important thing. Three different types of cake. Uh, you know, that's how it works. One for each team. One for each, <laughs> as you say, team discuss. Uh, so that was our tutorial. I was going to, I'll sum those up again. Yep. So we had the two runners up were Outrider Hobbies and Demon Sub. And then the winner was Lorna. So well done. So, yeah. Yeah. Congrats, you well done. So, our next is the best idea. Uh, and idea isn't about cataloging everything, it isn't about execution. It's just, you know, doing something. Being a bright just, spark. <laughs> just something that tickles our fancy. Something creative. Some, something creative that I, you know, we'd like to see. Um, and so, with this one, we're going to be starting off with an honorable mention for Zebra Adridor. Um, and this was an interesting little sprinkling challenge. Um, because uh, Tim has just run a Kickstarter for Die Hard Miniatures, uh, 
at which point he remembered he'd actually backed the first Kickstarter and they'd, left, <laughs> they'd been languishing in a box with plans to do something for Stargrave. Right. Um, so so this was a bit of a bit of a putting a gang together, uh, a Stargrave crew, but it also includes things like plucking out some of the artwork from the book to make a um what do you call them a mood board is that what they call them yeah i guess hey. be, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so, so there's little inspirational art and pieces yeah. <laughs> um to to get it going and then mm. after that um picking the miniatures that were going to make the the crew members themselves in this case uh found that one online so straight to the basket and then uh also use that white armor sort of look to define the crew themselves throughout this project there's also a constant narrative in-game commentary about the crew and the crew members which i love because it just runs throughout the entire thing so they're not just miniatures being picked and painted but they're actually being defined as to who they the are the reason why they've, they've been done. added yeah and um and so yeah. you get this sort of working together to to put the, the Stargrave crew onto the tablet top, um, which was just really, really nice. And it, uh, it tickles me. I, uh, I like the addition of the sci-fi breaker gobbledygook that's put at the yeah, start at the, of everything. At the top of <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just the random stuff that appears on like a CRT monitor in mm-hmm. Alien or something. <laughs> it's because everything yeah. ran off DOS in those days. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or proto-DOS. Yeah. But yeah, uh, really nice little collection of stuff a nice way of displaying it and also very cool yeah giving us a, an idea of who the crew are and what the crew are all about yeah. um and I, I just like that i like the the narrative exploration of uh, zebra's crew so mm-hmm. there we have it and towards the end we'll see the whole kit and caboodle there space given Da-da-da. but yeah that was our first honorable mention for uh for our ideas. Mm. Delightful. It's good. Mm. Big bunch of space things. Yeah. So next up, one that's near and dear to uh, both Ben and myself's heart, Ooh. which is Mirkborg. Mirkborg. And uh, the Forbidden Sam. Forbidden Sam. And yeah. this one, this one was interesting because of the time constraint uh they literally started at the start of june and went oh i really need to paint I need to get this done <laughs> and i've only got like two weekends to do it yeah, before yeah. the thing ends yeah. um so they chose to to put together a little project based on um mm. war cry models but also then because they had to a very limited amount of time to put things together, paint them. Uh, they decided to use a limited color palette, which is fine for Mork because it has this very distinctive yeah. solid colors for everything. Um, so in this case, you get a, the warbands themselves were sort of Zenith highlighted and then just color coded. Um, very simple. It's such a good idea for getting yeah. things down on the table mm-hmm. to play with. Yeah. In masses as well. I find when you paint one, it's kind of like, oh, okay. But when you see them in mass, it looks yeah. gorgeous as well. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. It really stands out. And I mean, that's that's all you kind of need, especially for something like Forbidden Psalms. Yeah. Um, Which unless you're probably going to be blamed by yourself anyway as well. Yeah, so, so. yeah you, you, don't yeah. Need to, you don't need to be clever. You just need to get the stuff on the table. Mm. Um, especially because they've got a limited palette on them. If you want to go back in later on and do something clever, like there's very thick shading, like black ink shading on a lot of the Morkborg artwork. Um, so if you wanted to go back later on and do that sort of comic style level of detail onto them, just to change up how they look, you could, and you're not running a, an existing style of, of painting, you're just adding to it because yeah. they've already got one you know one sort of solid color on them you can go from there or if you do want to just leave it as is you just leave it as is and play mm-hmm. um but for somebody going you know what i'm going to do this how long have i got four days really two weekends to paint that's uh, motivation for you uh, that really is yeah a big stick of motivation uh, <laughs> right over your back and shoulders uh so yeah got them done 
dusted and under the table and out for playing. And uh, yeah, if that's what it takes, then uh, Spring Clean Challenge is definitely a way to do it. Thanks. So that's our second unrebuild mention. So yes, on to our winners and runners up, our prize categories for uh, idea. And the first thing off is a bit of a spring clean of somebody else's stuff. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so one of peace found themselves a copy of Risk nice. in a thrift shop and decided to change it into um, classic war game armies, I suppose. Right. Um, so this is very much the sort of uh, idea behind revamping something that's been sitting around <laughs> for a while. Uh, and the fact that somebody's laid their hands on a, a Risk set and then decided, how can I turn this into a war game set? Uh, I'll need to do a bit of painting on them. Uh, is very interesting because it's it's nice to see risk painted and not just those solid colors but also the they've a, a sort of a plan behind the army build itself mm -hmm. so differing amounts of miniatures on the bases let you know whether it's a a, a particular type of uh cannon shot so you know a single cannon in there will just be uh a lower amount of attacks to a larger volume of cannon. I think they've got to two per base. Uh, and that way you can tell yeah. who's doing what. While they are painting the armies, they're not painting them to be a nation specific. They're more like imaginations. So you yeah. get the, the sort of the, the red, red army, army and the blue and army. The blue <laughs> army, which is how I've always liked to envisage things ever since the, yeah. the first time I picked up an Osprey book and, uh, <laughs> and read about uh, a conflict where you see the big red ver versus blue army on the sideline um it's just been really nice it's up to and including cutting up the uh lollipop sticks or tongue depressors into bases mm -hmm. so it's it's really is uh you know an army on a budget uh and there you can see things like your skirmishers two inf or two figures per base regular and four figures cannon is light <laughs> or regular or cavalry artillery if there's a cannon nymph on it and um and then cavalry for light and regular so you can sort of start playing a napoleonic style game um using these risk figures and i think it's a really interesting and effective way of reinvigorating yeah. uh, either something like this that's been a, a bit of a, a thrift shop or charity shop find or if you're sitting with an age-old copy of risk at home and you've given up on playing with them anymore and you want to well, make a, lot the figures, a lot of yeah, people yeah. will, yeah. yeah. You can start delving into other games. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing for me would be, would they go the whole hog and create their own rule set for it since they've created their own red and blue army? Um, sure. Because it, I think they were using black powder for, for they, they were talking about black powder, yeah. Yeah, but uh, that'd be cool, yeah. Just use them for your own game, yeah. Because you can, you can do so much when you're not limited by somebody else's uh rule set but i really liked seeing just somebody getting stuck in with i was gonna say a fiver's worth of figures it may not even be the fiver worth of figures uh, and being able to play out then these uh napoleonic games across a very small tabletop yeah, you don't need yeah. a lot of room when you're playing with yeah. what is the equivalent of 10 mil but then scaled down <laughs> for for black powder yeah. games as well yeah. so it's just just absolutely on really brand, good idea i suppose yeah. for uh for the sprinkling really, challenge really invigorate them really mm. re reanimate it <laughs> yes you too can uh turn a reasonably, turn a reasonably terrible board game into something cool so yeah. <laughs> terrible board game what can you do with what can you do with monopoly <laughs> well yeah that, that is true <laughs> That's yeah, the next challenge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> interesting, interesting to see. And uh a great Very use cool. of great use of somebody else's somebody else's figures from yours. Yeah. Ago. You know. Go big or go home, isn't that what they say? Yeah. Um, sticking with the 10 mil. Our other runner up is Apple Mac. Um with Morris or Maurice. Uh Sam Mustafa game. It is figure and scale agnostic um, for 18th century conflict, but 
decided he picked up the game when it was first released, which is some time ago now, uh, along with a couple of armies, and decided he would start getting stuff together to play with. And the first thing he decided to do would be to build the scenery terrain for the tabletop. Um, so this has been a case of dusting off. You can see there the armies, which unfortunately won't be got to in this because the uh, the challenge has ended. But hopefully he'll he'll get in there and bring us up to date with them in the future. Uh, but just actually getting the terrain set up was really, really nice um, because you can see things in the background, like the little villages and stuff, uh, especially when you're playing something like Napoleonic or 17th century, 18th yeah, century yeah. games. Yeah. You're playing around specific places and points in time and, and generally, especially for Sam stuff, they they can lean into the imagination side or you can be very historically accurate with them. So having all of the bits and pieces that you need, whether it's the roads, the rivers, the hills, forests and the like, mm. um, is almost a necessity. The other thing was uh, in the book itself, Sam defines what sort of sizes of tree and pieces you will need so you may have stuff that doesn't work for the scale you're playing in already so you'll have to you know adjust as appropriate uh, but really nice to see the bits and pieces that have been sort of lying around and uh if i actually skip to the end uh, it was just that you said there the sand that i used for the vlogging was from some sand that i got from holiday a while ago and it's great yeah <laughs> it's, it's literally i've got three big tubs of stuff it's used what i've got uh, yeah Use it, clear uh, out. And I'd start to uh start to make use of the bits boxes, the off cuts of polystyrene, yeah! the bits of balsa wood and tubes and whatever else you happen to have sitting in your terrain tubs, uh scrubbers. Um to put together a whole cool. table's yeah. worth of stuff. You can see there the uh sort of the sizes for the various bits and pieces. Nice. And uh and again, a fairly good guide as well of how they put together the roads, the hills, flocking us, setting up the uh, the various bits and pieces, even getting some 10 mil figures on the table to make sure that All like they wouldn't be. Yeah. yeah, so that's the correct size based on Sam going, road should be this big, but with his basing, it's a bit too narrow. So back to the drawing board and widen the roads. Um, you know, Measure twice and cut once, I think, is the phrase. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. You, know, you don't want to have a, a too narrow a road so that your stuff doesn't fit down it or they're floating. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, really nice um, project from Apple Mac. And I mm -hmm. like seeing things coming in there, like, and this will appeal to you, Free. The river sections here were painted mm -hmm. with watercolors because they have the transparency so that you can layer them up. Yeah. As he says himself, when you're painting rivers, you're not painting blue uh, but it meant that you can use different shades and the watercolor sort of gives Great you idea. transparency between them and easy to blend as well very nice idea so yes that was um going with the flow as he says a lot of interesting techniques as well papier mache hills anyone yes, yes. Uh, mess it's mess it's games. mess is always the way to do it yeah always 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 but I've seen it before from Apple Max projects where he puts the the sort of the time and effort into it to to get them together, these lovely little buildings, um, which can represent farmhouses or towns or cities, depending on how you're playing, uh, have actually been built up just from sort of solid off cuts of wood. Bosch, there you go, church so done, it. buildings done, don't need to mess around. Um, and I just, I really oh, like that, yeah. especially for 10 mil. 10 mil, I think well, yeah. you're better having the smaller buildings and then you just go, this is representative of the town. You're never actually going to be in it, especially if it works anything like Blucher does for Sam. Um, you don't actually inhabit the buildings, you just inhabit the area. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful project and some really interesting tips. And uh, at the end of it, even though the, uh, the armies still aren't painted, Everything else is. The train's all ready to rock and roll, so it's just a case of adding as and when he can get back to it. Yeah, very and, cool. Uh, yeah, And then getting the actual armies finished off as well, and and soon the... Uh, I'm not sure who those are. 
purple or white. <laughs> Could be Austrians. Someone, someone from from history, right? Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, so really nice stuff and uh, great runner up. Well done to Apple. Very, yeah. very yeah. So, our winner. And here's some more German for free. Yay! <laughs> Although it's not really German, because I think oh. it's it's an old worldy style empire. Uber die, Uber die, Brücke. Uber die, Brocky. That's why it is. It. <laughs> um, and this this is another one we'd already seen. I I had to give a little shout out to Star Grave Crew, but had to have this for the winner. Um, this is very much the epitome in every way, shape, and form of exactly what the sprinkling challenge is intended to be, where a diorama that was made in 1992, so mere 30 <laughs> years ago, to be entered into a competition that then they didn't enter it, so it was never really finished. It just got shelved, and um, and this was at the time. It came out of storage, so. Over the river, a Warhammer Fantasy style fight, or possibly just caravan. There's a lot going on, but it needed a serious amount of TLC. Oh, TLC, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's the the ogre from the old Warhammer Fantasy roleplay front cover. Oh the yeah, yeah. Ogre. from the front so, cover, yeah. yeah. And a little boat going underneath. <laughs> uh, so this piece of wonderment um, from zebra had to be stripped back and clean now we've seen somebody dusting off some one piece plastic board game miniatures this was a whole other rigmarole for zebra uh, Easy, because, yeah. because none none of these are plastic every man jack of them is lead on this thing wow and every bit of terrain there has been scratch built uh by the actual real live dead twigs for the trees so as it stood, it was in, uh, I think the phrase is right old state, um, and then had to be stripped back. All of the models, I think he plucked off and literally cleaned mm. uh, one by one. So the first phase, cleaning the plaster. So all the models ripped wholesale. It's enough to make me cry. Look at them all torn, torn from their places, uh, and then repair the actual whole base clean it repair it get it back oh. up to snuff again um in part and parcel of cleaning it up he discovered that some of the models were starting to be affected by um if not lead rot then certainly the 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 weathered weathered poorly so some of the models weren't going back on there oh dear afterwards uh but the building itself where the base board itself was all revamped cleaned reinvigorated to get it back to uh shining glory that lovely layer of snow slash plaster polyphilus back on whatever you want to call it <laughs> cake icing is there uh... <laughs> mm, yummy 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 yeah there's the big boat bella hello bella. Oh, uh, that's so brilliant it was a, yeah. a big refurb job on every part of it from the ground up and it all had to be uh cleaned fixed and then oh, repainted. Just, some motivation to get back into something that you haven't touched for a while, if we're from since 1992. Yeah. yeah There's but, some motivation to clean it all off, but it must be very rewarding. Yeah, and then um, after the rebuild of the base itself and everything was repainted, then it was a case of taking a look at the, um, the figures themselves. So like I say, these all got cleaned lovingly lovingly cleaned and then left out to dry can we ambiguate you if we can there we go so mm -hmm. you, some of them are very much the worse for wear some of them obviously yeah 30 years ago paint jobs would be different yeah. the paints would be different so everybody improves over time there he is look at him legend, legend. <laughs> i never owned him i always wanted him anyway um but it means then that you can revisit things with techniques that you didn't have 30 years yeah, ago. Yeah. Washes didn't exist, with the exception of you know actually applying washes yourself of a thinned paint, so they flowed differently, they behaved differently. Um, just the range of acrylics was limited as well. 
Uh, yes. So it, it opened a lot more room for exploration. Very and cool. Advancement. Oh, yeah. uh, and then obviously the miniatures that hadn't weathered particularly well didn't get to go back on. Uh, some of them had to be sacrificed for the greater good. Oh, yeah. no. That looks like a baby lava dragon. I wonder if it is. It yeah. looks like one of those classic old ones, like the Citadel ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you say? Oh, it's Grenadier Dragon Lords. Oh, there you go. Uh, there we yeah. go. Very nice. Anyway, so the repainting, trying to find colours that match or are close enough to deal with the chips without having to repaint the whole thing because it's it wasn't a complete strip down. It was, it was a spring clean. It was a touch up and a refurb. So if things could be left alone, then they were left alone if things needed to be tidied up neatened up or fixed then they were fixed but it, it wasn't a case of doing it all again from scratch very cool I love them going through yeah. there i love the um the covered bridge as well yeah and it's very very old world very it is it, it reminds me of something that you would have seen in warhammer world or even now you see in warhammer world like all the stuff's been put together that's very similar to that it's really cool it's not there's the even a pump wagon, wagon. <laughs> yeah yeah. Somebody's about to suffer badly from that. Yeah. Probably very, the snotlings. Yeah. And this one's just for Warren. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I mean, you know, you're you're out of window overlooking when a you river. Get the well, yeah. There as well, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so you get these. You can see there the sort of the damage done beforehand. And uh -huh. The blaster just eaten away. The the polystyrene. Yes. Back and then, uh, no, do I not open the scroll other down? One? Scroll down a little bit. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's a giant picture. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> well spotted, Batman. <laughs> then neatened up. And there we fixed. go. Yeah. So, yeah, the what a cool idea. Yeah. The, the project is just a wealth of pictures, unlike those old White Dwarf or, or GW dioramas like this, there's always something hiding somewhere. Whether it's somebody on the, Some boat below the bridge, or you know, somebody on the the bridge itself, or going through the the building in the middle, there's just so much to see. It was just gorgeous. Very cool. Very cool. And you can see how sort of vibrant things are now mm. compared to how. Oh yeah. Dull, chipped, and weather beaten. I mean, even the side of the bridge. Oh, it's, it's just come away completely different. Yeah. Congrats Average. on the uh, zebra outrider for even keeping it in the in the in the condition it was in. To be honest, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, Very yeah cool. it's it's just a, a beautiful thing, um, and as you can see, it finishes off with some lovely. That looks unreal. Shots. And that for me is what the spring clean challenge is all about. Very cool. I don't know if there's many other people sitting on 30 year old plus dioramas <laughs> that they fancy dusting off. I Very don't think true. many people would be. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for somebody to have one and then just to, to dig yeah. it out and, and go yeah. and hog, uh, just had to be there for me. Had to be. Yeah. So, so that yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, so second the, last or penultimate category. I was going to say, yes, I'll just recap that one. So the runners up there were one of Peace and Apple Mac. Well done. Uh, and then we also had the winner that was Zebra Outrider. Fantastic stuff. All right. So that brings us on to our last section, but no, or not our least section. It is our little <laughs> teeny tiny otter pups, the junior. Yay. Category. The junior members, this Warren yes. keeps trying to make us tell, make us, you know, otter categorize pups. them as, but they're actually just otters. So. They're otter pups. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, right. that's how it goes. Um, no, this one is one where I can go. Everyone's a winner. Because <laughs> uh, I could only find three people who had entered this year, uh, which was interesting. Um, but all three are worthy of being chucked in front of you for a quick look. Worthy younglings. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Seeing, seeing what, what the next generation is up to and uh, how they're getting on. So our first up is Melissa Clarissa Pierce, mm -hmm. uh, who was doing some work on Escaping Blood Bowl team. Now, Melissa won last year. She, she did win with last some Stormcast Eternals. Yeah, I, wonder, awesome. I wonder if the Escaping Blood Bowl team was her prize. 
<laughs> it might, might it's actually, if, if it's sat, yeah. if it's sat for a year. Yeah. Um, now I will say, none of our three entrants have done a mass amount of updates for us. So there they are, building away the skaven, being hard at it while listening to some. Uh, Rickcast, oh, <laughs> fantastic! Can be, you two can be Rickrolled, uh, yeah. But first off the bat, Melissa, starting off on the Skaven, I have nudged her because I want to see how she's got on. They <clears> might be painted and they just haven't been updated in the project, but yeah, yeah. you never know. Yeah, oh, I really, know. I really, really love seeing that it once getting involved. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, so it was actually for the Spring Clean Challenge last year. It says, Oh, was it? oh there you go. I the Skaven Blubble team that my dad bought me for the Spring Clean Challenge. There Fantastic. Well, like, maybe Perfect. it was bought for this. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah so our next runner up is uh, not Sukar 4, but uh, Sukar 4's daughter, which is seven. Um, and. Uh, and chose to paint a big dragon nice. called, called Jeff. Jeff? <laughs> Jeff? The, the name of the dragon is Jeff. That's wonderful. Uh, also, she was responsible for picking the uh, picking the colours and applying them. Uh, and, you know, it's one of those out of the mouth of babes things because anybody, when they reach a certain age, will just start going, well, it'll be an X dragon. It'll be this colour all over. Uh, whereas they've gone, no, hmm, it'll be whatever colour I want. And if that means different parts are different colours, then different parts are different yeah. colours. Yeah. Splash the paint on. The important thing is not to stifle creativity and to encourage them. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. in this case, we have this big brute of a, a dragon. Um, and I'm being taught the basics, dry brush, washes and uh, things like that. So... It's interesting. I quite like the... Um... On the first big mini. Yeah. As well. It's so different as well when you go on to your first big, big, big the, and changes the, from the taking such deals. small thing. Yeah. It's like a tail stuff there. It's like a barbershop pool coming at you. <laughs> It'll be very spiky. <laughs> yeah. It was just, you know, interesting to see. And hopefully they'll continue yeah, into the future. Absolutely. Keep on hobby. Mm. Teal. Still, I still claim teal as my colour. Everybody else has just decided to start using. <laughs> could be a nice blue, though, I suppose. After the Cyan. <laughs> could be that. Anyway, so Sukar 4, your daughter is a winner. Very awesome. Yeah. So we have our overall winner for the Young People Challenge, <laughs> uh, which is Starlight 7757. Rosamond, who's eight. Uh, and again, this one's got bit of painting and then more importantly a battle report you can see why it won just saying so again yeah, we have told you we have told you this is how you win it it's exactly <laughs> how you win for me it's not <laughs> high elf giant eagles yeah they were always good not as good as you know high elf bolt thrower but we'll get to the bolt thrower oh nice and i'm just having little tingles because these are the classic Proper old elves. school classic Plastic high elves that came in a. If you want to paint high elves, here's your little box. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't even that. These were the yeah. fourth edition. Well, they were in the the lizard yeah, man. The, were they in the lizard man set? Or no, they? They, they, these were the initial. It was high elf against orcs and goblins with the stabby oh, stabby goblins. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So they, this was the first the Crikey change then. from hardback books into an actual starter set, like people wow. would recognise today. Um, which I'm fairly certain. And it was Bretonian. Nice. But she does have the um, Griffin from the last High Elf starter set before the Island of World blood. Was exploded. Yeah. The Island of Blood with Boobies the Griffin. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, uh, the 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 cloak going on, or at least jacket. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's very it's mystically awesome. elven, which I thought was quite cool. Yeah. Come the unicorn. The coat. Yeah. 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 That may just be so the paint doesn't go everywhere. That might that might be the case. Yeah. Yep. But splattering color. Oh, all over the place. nice. Yeah. That's the way you steer it. And interesting mix of old and new. So that is the the painting side, but then there's also the gaming side. So twelve hundred points of sixth edition, also spring clean, 
playing old hammer as well oh it's Brilliant. so good yeah 100 percent good playing against 1200 points of dwarves victory was mine broke a war of vengeance of warriors not a war of the beard leaving yeah. not much <laughs> left on the table uh, and that's that's all good Seriously. because look look at the square bases like nature intended high off bolt thrower two for two for 100 points 50 points each best artillery in warhammer nice saying. this is great say that will pop yes i'm all for that mm-hmm. all for it all the time so not just encouraging kids to get painting but also gaming as well yeah absolutely cool. and i have to say sixth edition while easier than some still harder than a lot of the stuff today look pink dice pretty perfect for elves up against uh, some interesting dwarves. Not sure who they are. They look like they might be. They look like the Psychosiring dwarves on this side. The, the ones on the left are the normal dwarf warriors from uh, sixth, sixth through the eighth, I think. But the the ones on the right, I'm not sure where they're from actually. But uh, although they might be, there's some. I think there's some iron. Are there iron breakers in there? I can't tell. They look very different. It's very weird. The, oh, with the tiny axe on the back, they are actually the original Bugman's Rangers. Oh, they, are, they are wow. classics. Wow, cool. Anyway. Yeah, nice the little battle report thing. Yep. Yeah. No, let's not focus on that stuff. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> As is often, often the case. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's the nice. Victory Pose. Absolutely. Sm- smashed your toys in, Dad. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Uh, so those are our winners for the Brilliant. Otter yeah. Pups, the junior category. Yeah, so that was uh, Millie Clarissa Pierce was a runner-up. Sokarfor's daughter <laughs> was a runner-up. Uh, and also Starlight 7757 as well. You were the winner. There we go. Amazing. The winner. Congrats you well done for everyone who's taken part in the Spring Clean Challenge. If you are looking to see if you're the winner or if you are, know you're the winner and are looking to claim your prize, mm-hmm. if you come over to on tabletop.com, go to this more section. And under the contact us, you'll find claim a prize. Click on that and underneath all of the prizes will be listed with the winners. And then you can just get in there and claim your prize through that. I saw the name Shaw and was like, oh, I won. Oh, wait, no, I didn't even know. No, you didn't. <laughs> Not this time, man. Not this time. Uh, and and there, there we have it. That wraps us up for another week. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been fun looking through all your projects. It really has. Yeah. Feel free to get involved next year, or if you can't wait, you can always put up battle reports right now. Ah, oh, breaking those golden buttons. Yeah. Uh, we shall not be back next week. You shall be back next week. I'm on holidays, <gasps> but if you want one last look at my lovely gub, I'll be here <laughs> Sunday morning for the XLBS show. That's over on tabletop.com uh, for our Cult of Games members, and if you're not already a cultist, you can join us with a 30-day trial. Uh, But until I get back, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.